are back with episode eight of season four of We Do a Little Pod. And before we jump in, I want to take a moment to highlight some big news we announced for this season. Season four is officially powered by Arbitrum, and our content is now redistributed across Rug Radio and Decrypt's platforms. Annie and I have been massive fans of Arbitrum since they launched, and both of us invested in Offchain Labs as Series B back in 2021. This is a full circle moment for us, and we couldn't be happier to partner with Arbitrum for this season. If you've never felt the frictionless transactions at lightning speeds on the world's most decentralized L2, what are you waiting for? Head on over to portal.arbitrum.io to check out their growing ecosystem where you can explore 600 plus apps and even participate in missions to earn points. Without further ado, let's dive into this week's episode. In this week's episode, we did a little something different again. We bring on our first ever couple, Goku and Maria. Goku is a badass artist and collector who has been a champion in the salon art space since its inception. He is currently in the marketing and community lead at Exchange.Art. Maria Sutherland is an incredible producer, known for planning some of the best executed events in the space, such as NFT Now's Gateway in Miami and Korea. We dive into all things long-term relationships, how Goku and Maria met, their first big breaks in the crypto space, and so much more. As always, this podcast is for entertainment purposes only and should not be relied upon for investment decisions. Andy, Dees, and guests may be invested in companies or tokens talk about on this podcast so we're here with shipwreck podcast with my co-host. episode two of the week episode two of the week 2024 January. i keep saying 2014 by the way 2024 i'm here with my co-host and my friend Dees, and i'm here with two amazing people our first couple onto the podcast first couple <laughs> they uh, they have just gotten Power married couple. which we'll talk about and they are two of my favorite people in the world we have Yeah, you'd call me my real name. Goku on Twitter, but also uh, his real name is Keegan. And his lovely wife, who people might not recognize, but is the heart of a lot of the stuff in the community that people don't know that she builds, Maria. Thank Thank you guys for coming. Yeah, well, it's true. Maria and I met a long time ago at this burlesque show that she was part of. (laughs) Then we lost contact and Dave Krugman introduced us like six years later. Is this true? No. no. You can never tell. Like, the second bit. part was true. The but you just never know what's going to come out of yeah. his mouth. <laughs> so Dave introduced you. Yes. Dave introduced me, Maria and I, and we did an amazing event that Dees was part of. NFT NYCC. NF- NFTC. NFTC. At, at, during NFT NYC. Yes. We did NFTC. There's a lot of NFTs going on. There's a lot of, a lot of NFTs. Yeah, yeah. We rented out a movie theater, and Maria and I hit it off, and we just had the best time and, and then Keegan and I got close and then that was it that's basically how it is and now I love them but their dog is my favorite person in their T- house Tilly yeah. is here in spirit. Tilly is here oh, in man. Oh, she, she would wreck this studio yeah. right. <laughs> for these cameras she, Poor she wish. wouldn't have it anywhere yeah. Yeah. It, it, Poor she wish. would lose her mind she would break everything yeah she would be for on like top of for like five minutes and then she'd be like right here yeah maybe she's Actually, very she'd probably be right she'd be right here yeah right. exactly she yeah. kind of <laughs> loves me yeah, let's be honest you are the favorite but I, but I was just at um, Maria and Keegan's wedding, and it was a very special moment. And I, and then after the wedding, me and my wife and the girls came over for Christmas. That was beautiful. And I put up a mezuzah in their house that I gave them at their wedding. Yeah, well, you, you gave us the out, full Jewish blessing. Yeah, yeah you wedding. left out the best part. You actually helped marry us. I did. I was part of the. I, Dave was the master of ceremonies, and I helped do the uh, the wedding part as well with Dave. I did. It's a it very NFT it? wedding. Like. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's like the heart and soul of the NFT culture. That's what this is all about. You blending know? you guys together. How did I, you two meet? We met on tour. Uh, I uh, I started touring when I was 19 uh, in live music. Just a lost kid, really. What type of music? Uh, it was. It's a group called Cherub. Uh, it's like disco, pop. Yeah, they have a huge <laughs> song, Doses of Mimosas. Uh But I started touring with them as like a lighting intern and uh, my boss decided he didn't want to do it anymore. So I got a call up a few months later and they were like, all right, you know, we really liked your energy. Like, we'd love to have you out. And I was like, hey, man, sorry, I got to go do this. So I ended up touring with them for years and we were best friends. I was the merch girl. When you saw Keegan... Did the first thing Maria you felt was like, man, I want to. Oh, I can answer this one. The, well, the first let's thing say, she let's said. Say, let's say it's Maria. Though. Okay, Keegan. Because I want to know what she like. My first impression yeah. of Keegan was that he probably had never washed his hair before. Okay, <laughs> which was probably true, right? 100%. Dude, I was still Florida. Like he yeah. was nineteen. He yeah. was nineteen. I'm 19, older. Fresh out of Florida, cargo shorts, tie dye shirts only. Like, 
And I was like, oh, do yeah. you want to borrow my shampoo and conditioner? <laughs> And that was like our first. And yep. so I would always let him borrow my shampoo and conditioner. I'd be like, do you want to go get lunch? Was like, the next line finally something? like, do you want to borrow my shampoo and conditioner with me while we <laughs> Not shower? for years. Oh, okay. Not for many years. It took years. Um, my favorite part of the story is Keegan has tattoos on his butt. I don't know if a lot of people in Web3 know this. It's true. And when he got them, I was like, such a bad idea like you're gonna meet a girl and she's gonna be like Ew. <laughs> like some woman is gonna have to look at those for the rest of her life and like now i'm that woman right which is crazy you're, like you were telling yeah. him the advice for yourself yes mm -hmm. and uh yeah hindsight is something else and now and now, and now and now now do you love the tattoos on his butt i don't even now notice them anymore notice you don't yeah. even notice them. and you're 19 when you got them oh yeah so it was like the first week of being officially on tour uh, it was, I was my 20th birthday and someone had gotten their hit song spelled wrong across their chest. So I said, no I would one up that. Okay. And I said, I would get your faces on my ass and no, their oh eyes lit up it was like, boom. Oh my God. And I, and I was like, Did you know, you realize what? what you said at that time. Yeah. You know, I've always been the kind of person so who just have, commits wait, to things. Can we stop for a second? You have two tattoos of, <laughs> of faces, faces and they're not of small. People? They're like the size of a paw. On both sides, your butts. Yeah. yeah. I'll yeah. show you the okay, video. I it's a, on YouTube. Wait, I have a lot of questions. You can find hold it on. everywhere. Oh, hold on. I have a lot of Keegan's questions. Wait, can we open out. the wine? Can we do that? That's yeah. a really good idea right now. Okay. Thank you. I don't can, know the rules. Can you get us two, four glasses? All right. Thanks. <laughs> you got it. All right. He's got it. Now, I just want to go back to this. You have two strange men. Are they two men? Yes. Yeah. On your butt. Yeah. Do you still talk to them? Oh, yeah. My best friends in the whole world. Were they at the wedding? One DJed the wedding, and the other, he lived in Thailand. Wait, that guy? Yeah. Yes. Why didn't you I tell me? I would have, like, this is a whole other layer and of conversation yeah, I could have had. Yeah, that whole table, them. a lot of that table was, like, our music friends, and... Um, did, and did you ever think getting lasered off and put, like, your wife's face on it? No, no. never. Honestly, it's part of a story arc, right? Like, you have to just, like, go with... You have to own what you do. But be careful. It's going to pop up. Yeah, it's a sparkling red. Does that mean it's gonna yeah, go? Yeah, let Keegan Maybe. do it. I feel like he, you'll be fine. Don't, don't break the TV. So he had these tattoos. Woo! <laughs> and she, this is takes you a little time to realize how amazing he is. Well, and so, at what moment did this all change? We actually, no one knows who kissed who first. Yeah. Okay. But we were on a tour bus ride, like a late night from San Francisco to Santa Cruz. It's like an hour and a half. Okay. Um, and we got to Santa Cruz and our bus oh, driver crazy. walked, ooh, lovely, walked into the front lounge of the bus and found us making out. And he was appalled. He was disgusted. Oh. Disgusted. He's and been at us for years at that point. Our tour yeah. manager got on the bus and our tour bus driver was like, don't go in the front, like, you, I cannot tell you what's happening in the front lounge. Like, appalled. <laughs> that Keegan and I had made out. And so then we proceeded, it was the last week of tour, and we got roasted by all of our friends for a week Hello. that we had made out. Uh, but backtracking... Was it, like, was it like a slobbering kiss makeout section? No idea. That we don't, was, like, neither, was, of us, neither of us remember it. You don't remember it. No. So it no. must have been something It was, was, it was good enough it was where like we two, wanted to keep doing it every day the rest of the, the tour. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and we've been together ever since. Yeah, and that was it. Before yeah. that, though, we just, like, we were best friends. We just, like, bonded over random nonsense. We would go, like, tours very, like, male-dominated energy. So Cheers, we would to go out. Cheers to making out and not remembering. We would drink a lot of wine and eat a lot of cheese. And, like, it's yeah. kind of full circle here. Yeah. So you make out, don't remember it. And then years later, you're married. Yeah. Now, I remember before you were married, it was a very sore subject for Keegan. Not for me. I was fine. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> One time I bring it up. It, when we were all out together and I brought it up in front of Maria and Keegan got very upset and came up to me after and he said he's like he's like what are you doing I was like well dude you got to get engaged and um he took it very seriously because he wanted to I now realize he wanted to wait, wait like a fine wine to the exact right moment when it was going to be special and yep. then I think it was no Maria yeah it was perfect. It was, was perfect. Was right? it tough for you waiting oh, yeah. that long? That, that's oh my that's God. an understatement. That's a sore subject. That's a yeah. sore subject. <laughs> it's okay. It's, all water, it's, it's all water under all the bridge now. It's all water under the bridge. All water under the bridge. But Benny was with me when I had found out that one of my best friends in the whole world who was dating someone for a year was engaged. <laughs> it was ugly. It so was you weren't ugly. even engaged. And that was the best Wait, part. How is, long did it take from when you were together to when you got engaged to when you got married? Seven years. Seven years to engagement. Okay. 
and then like a what, year later, I, we got uh, less okay. than a year later, we so, got married. Yeah. At some point along that line, you probably felt like you were already married and engaged. Definitely so. And you're like, well, what's I the... was like, but no jewelry, so it doesn't count. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I, very similar experience with my wife. It was, you know, we started dating in 2013. I didn't propose to her until she moved to Ohio because we were in this, like, longer distance yep. relationship. And then we didn't get married. You met playing COD, right? Uh, League of Legends. League of Legends. Yeah. Really? Yes. I, I that's love incredible. That. Well, it's, it's kind of nuanced because I had a mutual friend who played League of Legends and he was friends with my ex. And one day he invited me to a game to play with my now wife. But I had no idea who she was. She had no who, idea who I was. And it was just us three. And it was like very similar to you two. We became pretty close friends. We would just spend a lot of time playing together. Yep. And then like one time um, I went back to college after a summer of working and playing games with her. And my friend was like, who, who are you texting? And I just like sputtered out like my girlfriend and i had never told her like she didn't know like we weren't dating but it felt like we were because right. she was you like spent every day together so then i texted her and was like hey like i just told my friends that we're dating what do you think about that and then she was like well so we, smoothies wow well. we, we kind of are <laughs> Yeah. So then we've been together ever since. But it was a very sore thing of like, well, I felt like we're married when she moved to Ohio, but if we aren't legally married, it's we're not married. This is great. Yeah. I don't even know if my wife knows we're married yet, to be honest. With you. Really? <laughs> I, Are you married? I, Did you check? No, we this? got married. So we actually got married twice. I told you this, right? Would you have to get married like in well, the Well, I Jewish got married tradition? and they did the marriage license this wrong. Great, yeah. And then I ended up marrying my best friend. And then oh, the no, state called that. me at the time. <laughs> And was like, uh, Mr. Gross, I said, yes, Mr. Gross, I said, are, he said, are you married to uh, a Randy? I said, no, I'm married to somebody completely different. Like Randy's, they thought you were like Randy's gay? My, well, no, Randy. So they, they thought I was so pre-gay legalized This is pre-gay marriage. legalized marriage in New York. So he said, the lady was so nice. She's like, look, sir, <laughs> look, you know, sir. I don't want to blow up your thing. We understand what's happening, but I can't legally do it. So you have to sign up these pieces of paper. And I was like, ma'am, I am not married to Randy. I'm married to my wife. What happened was the rabbi had him sign in the wrong spot. So I was legally married to my best friend or unlegally. I don't know what it was at the time. We had to fill out some paperwork. You're in a gray area. And I actually wasn't friend. married to my wife for almost three years. We married 18 years. In the Wait, first you didn't year. realize for three years? No, we knew like after the first four months. And then I don't know. We the just legal did, process. The legal like process. Getting it undone. <laughs> so instead we flew to um, Vegas with four of my friends, five of my friends. And we went to uh, uh, an Elvis impersonator thing. And he married us in Vegas. Like That's, those like mini yeah. churches. Do your in-laws know that? Oh, yeah, they know that. That was the second. <laughs> oh, yeah. That right. was the, that that was the, the first nail in the coffin was that we had midgets at the wedding, that just like Oompa Loompas. The second thing was nail in the coffin. We got married in Vegas. And ever since then, you know, I've said five words to them. Or Could so, you yeah. do any weird, not weird, uh, eccentric things like Oompa Loompas at the wedding? Much to Benny's chagrin, we did. It was pretty classy. <laughs> yeah. I tried. They told me I wasn't allowed to bring. Yeah. Yeah. Little people. We did have fire. Yeah, you did. There was fire. There, there was, was fire. Some, that was, was kind of cool. Dessert pyrotechnics. The, the dessert um, was actually the best dessert ever. Dessert wedding. pyrotechnics, like it a, was, yeah, fire. Yeah, like they lit like a flambe up. And, okay. yeah. It was it was an awesome wedding. It was it was one of the most fun weddings I've had in did a very you, long so time. Actually, M Maria is known for being like one of the best planners ever. Yes. Did you plan your own wedding? Oh, or? absolutely. Yeah. You would not allow anyone to do anything else. I'm the best client I've ever had. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. I'm, I'm my own best and the best client. part was like, I was like, are you going to plan the wedding? She's like, no, no, I got somebody. I'm going to take a step back this time. I was like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah, sure. Yeah, 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 Keegan yeah, yeah. was like, you'll hate that. Yeah. yeah. Don't even think about doing it. And yet. she did. She planned a great wedding. If I get married again, for the third I, time, for the for the third time, I would have you. I would have you plan. I wish I could plan my own wedding once a year. It was so much fun. You know whose wedding, wedding, wedding we're gonna have to plan? That's going to be outrageous. Dave's. <laughs> what? I'm just trying to think. About I want him to marry himself in like a oh marry my himself. God, like a multiverse. He's an incredible officiant. This like would be officiate his, his, own own his own wedding of him marrying himself. Oh, this is a good movie. This is actually this not is that bad of idea. By the way, he would love it. And we could do it like in the forest. I wonder how legally binding it is. Remember in the '90s when there was like people who like married inanimate objects and yeah. like I think that's like still dogs happening. and weird stuff. It was like on Getting Oprah. A tax I just remember that being on Oprah all the time. Do you know so, I dated like... a girl once? There was a that the girl I dated was on Mori Provich. No, I never told you <laughs> on the Mari show. Yeah, I guess it's whatever. 
I get <laughs> that's your claim to fame. I got set up with this girl. Was she and on the show before you got set up? Let me let me tell you. Okay. These, it's 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 fascinating. It's <laughs> riveting. So basically, I get get set up with this girl. Now, I didn't get set up with a lot of girls because I I was often playing video games, so girls weren't a priority for me. And, and you couldn't meet girls online in the video Correct. games. Correct. Right. So one day yeah. I took a picture with me and my friend of a close up, and I put it on this site that celebrated people who got married in the Jewish world. And I put it up and said I got engaged to my friend, like, bracha. And it was on the front page, and I got all these people who recognized me saying mazel tov, but it was really just my guy friend. So I got kicked <laughs> off this site for got forever. They sent me an email, like, you were, for, you were forbade from this site forever. But meanwhile, all of a sudden I got all these people saying, oh, that girl thought your thing was funny. She wants to do a date with you. So I started getting dates, and I was like, okay, it's not bad. I go out, this, I get set up with this girl. I have this amazing phone call. I call my friend. I was like, hey... I just got upset with this girl. She lives a block away from you. I don't want to say from where. Yeah. And he goes, I don't know who she is. I was like, dude, she's our age. And in the Jewish world, like if you're our age and you live you a block everybody. away, you know everybody. He's like, I have no idea who she is. Two days later, he calls me up. He's like, look, I got bad news and I got good news. I was like, what's your good news? He said, good news is she lives a block away from me. <laughs> bad news is that she's never been outside in the sun. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm not kidding, dude. And that's why she was on Mari. It's like what? Yeah, yeah. Was it she, like a phone-in situation? Or no, like she went. Boy? She she's allergic to the sun. She traveled at night to the snow. Correct. Or she has to wear like this like g garb. It's like a real thing. So I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna not go out. This girl, I had a great phone call with her. Like, you know, she could be really nice. She could still be pretty. Like, you know, you know. I looked up people who had this disease or whatever it is, and it was normal. And I go out on the state and. It was the worst. It was such a bad date because nothing to do with the fact that she was allergic to the sun. Now, I didn't realize this, by the way, preface by saying, I was like, hey, let's go to the zoo. I like to the museum. She's like, no, no, let's just do dinner. She kept like wanting to go out at night. Now I realized. I have this date with her. I take let's her go out. To the zoo. And she, she tells me she doesn't want to watch TV. You know, she doesn't like uh, computers and stuff like that. And it was just a horrible date. And like, in, in like, at 45 minutes in, I'm like, no, Pretty I, much every one of your interests call, was scratched yeah, off. I called the waiter over. I was like, yo, pack up my stuff and her stuff. I'm just going to take it back. And then to I pack put, up her stuff. And then I put her on a bus and I sent her home. What and I got bus? back. Like she was took a bus. Like I didn't have a car. I, I put okay. her on a bus. I mean, she, I, I, she's going to go on a bus anyways, you know. But I right. helped her just get the on the bus. earlier bus. Yeah, yeah, the earlier bus. Yeah. <laughs> and then I. Um, you know, you're allowed to do that. I got back to the room and this other girl who set us up, she's like, I cannot believe you. It didn't go well. Just like, you, was it really just because, like, she was like mad at me. And I was like, what do you mean? She's like, you know, you shouldn't judge her just because she can't be in the sun. I was like, let me explain something to you. Had nothing to do with not being in the sun or being a vampire. It's the fact that she was the most <laughs> boring human being on the face of the planet. Anyways, that's, that's my story. Worst dates? That, that was my second worst date. My first <laughs> worst date? Am I really doing this online? No, no, you don't got to do it. I mean, I can tell you actually quickly. I went out with the girl. We'll decide which story is better to put online. I go out with this girl. <laughs> Again, same thing. Just get my first dates. You're going to love this one, Maria. <laughs> I say to her, hey, I'll pick you up. My friends drive me the night before because I'm very bad at directions mm. <laughs> to know where she lives. I get a flat tire on the way there. I'm late. <laughs> I finally pick her up. And it turns out it was the wrong house. I couldn't. And the lady. Wait, you picked her. You picked up someone else? No, it was poor lady. She's like, oh, this is the wrong house. I don't know who that is. And she had to help me find it because I, you know. <laughs> It wasn't like I had cell phones. I had a cell phone, but she couldn't pick up. I don't know. I finally find the house. I have this great date with her. I have another great date with her. And I'm like, okay, look, I really like this girl. I said, you know what? It was like a Thursday. I said, let's meet Sunday in the city. And she's like, let's do it. She's so excited. I get a message Saturday night on AIM. Remember AIM? Of oh, course. Yeah. That was classic. Right? I can hear the sound in my head. And it's like, whoop. I'm like, I can't make it on a Sunday. It's like, okay. Boop. I was like, let's do it Monday. She's like, boop. She's like, I don't think this is working out. I was like, boop. Did you just break up with me on a text message? Like, this is the craziest. Like, you could just call me. Like, we had this great date. And she's like, yeah, I'm sorry. Just not working out. And I was like, okay. I was like, can I just ask? Like, you know, we had two incredible dates. What happened? Boop. I'm sorry, but my father has been very successful. And I just don't think you're going to give me the lifestyle I need. <laughs> <laughs> and I wrote, boop. I said, okay, in that case, the dates both cost me $85. Can you send me a check for $42.50? <laughs> she wrote, boop. 
She's like, are you serious? I wrote, boop, yes, I am. <laughs> boop. She's like, okay. So she sent me a check and I cashed it. And that was the worst day I'd ever had in my life. Well, wow. it sounds like the date went fine. It the was date, just it was fine. The it was the breakup after. after. It was only so, two days. That that is, to be him. fair, as far as breakups go, that was pretty good. You cashed out on the breakup. So. Well, the, I mean, we didn't make out, which was unfortunate. But <laughs> I had two great dates, and I paid, she paid for half of it. So I thought it was fair. Benny, what yeah. was your AM screen name? Benny Big. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Benny Big. Benny Big. Was it? Yeah. Okay. That was my nickname as a kid, so... My friends nicknamed me that. Girls loved For the, the exact reasons why I'm sure. Oh, I'm sure. Oh, it's got well, Mine, had, I think I had like a, I'm pretty sure I had like the, the. Was it always upper, Goku? No. Goku started as a, as a gamer tag though with Call of Duty days and it kind of kept going. <laughs> like, so every game I played from like 12 onwards, I put like Goku something like Sniper Goku, you know? Like, Do you ever call him Goku? Never. Never. No, never. No. Like, even if you're like at a NFT thing, you're like, no. oh, it, no. it blows my mind every time someone calls him Goku. Yeah. And I I'm forget. still not over the double intro thing either. Where I'll meet like, someone and I'll be like, oh, yeah, you know, my husband's Keegan. And they're like, who? And I'm like, oh, Goku? And they're oh. like, oh my gosh, you're Goku's wife? I do like, the same thing to myself. <laughs> and actually, wild. I kind of like introducing myself as my real name sometimes and then just like ducking it out. And then yeah. like, that's better that way sometimes. Oh yeah, I never say my real name. No. I'm like, no. but my wife, you know, she's always on the line of like, do I say D? Like, I'm right. Miss- it's it's right. weird for her because she only knows me by my name. Right, <laughs> but you're more non than he is. Yes, so yeah. that's that's hard. But you're, I, you're you're not in the non, right? No, n- not really. I, no. I started off like wanting to be, and then I was like, I'm actually not smart enough to do this. And I also realized that I had so many friends that it would like, like in New York in the scene that it would be hard for me to like filter everyone. Be like, no, don't put me in those pictures, yeah. or like like having to tote the line with all these different IRL. The first groups. time I had a, a, an NFT account back in old Twitter, crypto Twitter days, I was a non. Now, now, I, I, this time I was like, I almost I'm went doing it. doxxed on a pod we did virtually with Chikai, and then I've had it in storage for two months because I'm afraid to release it. And I'm like, I'm just not going to dox myself. I'm going to put my punk back on my head. Like, once you do it, you can't go back. No. no. But if people, po- if people pay attention, they, they know what you look like. Well, you're posting my face. I post you all the time. Shit, Nobody yeah. says anything. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> well, that's the best thing about not being doxxed is because like, then like, you yeah, know what Then he's doing those like yearly reviews yeah. where he does like a two There's actually a show. few people, I'm gonna, I am gonna. don't want to say their names, that are non, that are in those pictures. Oh, 100%. And, and I mean, people have no clue. Yeah, yeah, and I, I'm in like five of them. Yeah. I was watching, I'm like, man, I'm in that one. And like, I'm like, fuck, I'm in. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Uh, but anyway. That's what Benny's job is. He's like kind of the king doxer, like yeah. grandpa. Have you been um, New York residents for like how long now? I moved up here to be with her. We were long distance for a little bit in were Nashville. Were you from here? I'm from New Jersey originally, okay. but I went to college here. So I've been in New so York since that, like, I was 18. Yes, yeah, so you have that. She's born in New York. And now there's yeah. the Staten Island. You have that like boss, like, I'm going to get shit done. Yeah. Yes. Like, that sp- was one of the most intimidating things for me too. Well, actually enjoyable because like, like I don't really have to step towards some of these things. And if I do, it annoys her actually because she likes the way she does it. She likes to handle it. I'm a so, control freak. I'm like, I don't mind it a lot of times because it's like, you're really good at what you do. Like you're. And when did you know that like you're really good at organizing, planning, executing? Like were you was, always. Like when you were four, right? <laughs> <laughs> it yeah, was actually, videos of her as a kid. Like, I had to be told that I was a producer. Yeah. I didn't have a word to describe like what I enjoyed doing or what I was good at doing until honestly until I met Dave. Dave, mm-hmm. Dave Krugman and Jay and Silva and I go back like over 10 years now. Nice. Early Instagram days. And were they, you on Instagram like I, posting content or I was more of a background person. I've okay. always been a background person. I followed Dave and Jay and a few other guys who were photographers. Loved their Steve work. Steve Sweatpants. Steve Sweatpants. Really Steve Sweatpants was the first one. Met them. And they were just getting like their first like influencer deals, right? Like brands were just starting to hit up people with yeah. like a hundred thousand followers. This is pre-NFTs, by the way. Yeah, oh, it's like twenty twelve. Yeah. yeah, twenty twelve. Yeah. Um, and they were like, "Oh, I don't know how to answer this email. I'm so bad at answering my emails. None of them <laughs> could of do us. email. Like, still ten years later, still can't answer their emails. Nothing's changed. Um, and I was like, "Oh, I can I, help you answer can your email. emails. I can help you negotiate this thing I've never heard of before." And. <laughs> The first, first big project we ever did together was for AT&T, which is crazy for that to be like the first first, big project. And Dave was like, okay, we're going to go into this meeting, but like you need a title. You're going to be the head of production. And I was like, 
That's so funny. Googling like head what? of production, <laughs> producer, how to be a producer. And that is literally how my whole career started. And I was like, oh, organizing spreadsheets. Um, and I've kind of learned from there. Like I literally g- graduated, almost graduated college, but like Google, <laughs> Google University oh, yeah. is how I figured out that I'm a good planner how to plan things, all of that. And she really has done some incredible events, like all the NFT now stuff, like the Gateway. That's Gateway all is crazy. It is. It's the one, the one in on. Miami, this last one that I thought was stunning, you you killed it. I mean, like you just, your understanding of artists and respecting them and how to pr- portray them in the right way is, is, is I think amazing. that's like my favorite. I think the reason I'm good at what I do is because all I want to do is bring a creative vision to life. Like yep. from the beginning, it was like, even that AT&T project, it was like, okay, the director has an idea. Like I want to do what the director wants to do. I'm never like, oh, what does the client want? And I think that yep. is a big differentiator with a lot of producers, event producers, video producers. It goes across the board is I want to be on the creative side. I want to bring their vision to life as opposed to like, how does the brand want to best be portrayed? Because right. if, if a brand gives up a little bit of control to the creative, like that's ultimately the best content you're going to get. Do you think there's not enough branding the right way in Web3? I think that it's a little all over the place. There's no standard, right? Like Mm -hmm. when you look at like commercials, there's a standard. There's like a length everything should be. There's a frame rate everything should be. Like there's a standard in place. There isn't that for Web3 yet, I think across the board with platforms with events, with content. Uh, but I think we'll get there eventually. You know, and I think it's the creatives who are going to ideally lead that to a good place as opposed to like leaving it up to brand's hands. It reminds me of when you were doing like run and gun video shoots in like, you know, 2012, 13, 14, before the production element came in, you know, like before everyone knew about the industry standards and stuff, like similar energy to that. I mean, it's, it's interesting because I think that we talk a lot about, you know, adoption but yet we're not and instead of like maybe working within the constraints of what has been created already a lot of people like they throw that away and say like i don't need that i'll do it on my own but if they kind of took a little bit of what was created which i know you do worry a lot then they would find it that it would be easier for them to start branding based on build on what was already created like art right everything like we said before all art is some kind of derivative of other things i'm sure marketing and branding is the same thing absolutely right? it's just about how you're gonna be more creative about it you know dave and we're talking about a lot about him but it's also because we're connected and he's you know beautiful but it's true he it, he's he's a perfect uh example of that like dave dave understands marketing campaigns and branding campaigns he he changes them to do it on his own and his own style but he has like a a a wealth of that knowledge you know and i think that that's really interesting i think it helps too to have like because a lot of these people who started off and that's why i like tell artists like not compare yourself so much to other people yeah. in that way because most people don't know like someone like dave has done branding work worked at an agency even, traditional marketing yeah. yeah for years so like everyone has these different skills so like for you to compare just based on a timeline is like almost silly because it's like you're, you don't see any of what this person's skills Agreed. started as being Agreed. built as by you but know? talking about silly and different all those years, Maria, that nobody was buying Soul, <laughs> and everybody was shitting on it. All those years, all those AKA. years, all whatever those years. that is. Yes. One, those two, one years. To two years, those two years. <laughs> and Keegan is sitting there holding his soul, building on Soul. What was he like? Was there times? Did you ever walk into a room and he was just standing in the, on the wall and like going, like, "Fucking, you buy Soul, you don't understand." Like, was he yelling at? <laughs> Ghosts Never, and people. No. Keegan, like, was there anger there? Or was he? He was he just the whole time. He he knew the whole time and was just confident. Well, first and of all, calm. Keegan never has anger. Like uh, he never. is a cool, yeah, calm, really collected angry. human. Ninety nine percent of the time. Wow. Um, like and especially one. with Solana, he had like such conviction from the beginning and such understanding and such like all he wanted to do was talk to people about it. You know what I mean? Like he was never like, oh, everyone needs to adopt on soul. Everyone needs to put their work on soul. It was just like, you, when you guys understand what this is, you're going to be You'll stoked. Come. Yeah. And I was like, maybe you should get on, like, 
this ETH train. Like, why, why are you well, so Well, I always stuck? was. That's the beautiful part. And that's what he would always you say. Started He's like, out. I'm, I'm multi-chain. Yeah. Like, I'm I have I'm more ETH than both. anyone who was complaining about me being too <laughs> Solana. Like. And so did you listen to him and buy Soul, or did you... Did you? Uh, well, I actually released I yes a project on Solana. That's right. I I in she late, brought Web two to Web three. I remember early. that was with Sweet Dreams. Street Dreams. I can't keep saying Sweet Dreams. <laughs> Street Dreams. Because you love in the, you late twenty twenty one. Yeah, we partnered with Metaplex, which is the protocol <laughs> that. So we partnered with Metaplex, and they helped us build out this thing called Pax, where we released photography trading. It was cards. actually very cool. Um, Some great photographers with. Some of the best photographers, I think, in the space in New York. Um, it was called Celebrating the Winds. It was incredible, but the tech was a little too early. So I had like kind of explored Solana, explored the tech on Solana, was like very integrated into the Solana ecosystem from late 2021. And I think that's kind of when you started. That's when I went fully into the yeah. ecosystem. I had Sol already. Like I had a pretty lowish cost basis of it, not a huge amount. But enough for me to get curious yeah. and like start exploring. I mean, that, the summer this was back when like, like Sobe was bucks. exploring and stuff yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, like, I remember that. Like it was like when Soul went from like whatever to eight dollars to thirty five, like all in one week, basically. Yeah. Uh, the summer so, uh, twenty twenty. That was like, yeah. dude, you would literally send your soul to someone and hope you got an NFT in return because like the the protocol that exists now that Metaplex made, Candy Machine, like which prints PFP projects, mm -hmm. didn't exist. So you literally were doing like the jankiest stuff. It's and spreadsheets. Yeah, yeah, spread, spread, yeah, yeah exactly. Say, Spreadsheet days. Spreadsheets. As lo, I, That's all the rarity traits. They weren't on chain yet. They were just on like. What I tell you? Anything in this space that tell that has a spreadsheet. That means it. I'm in. Yep. <laughs> I'm making money on it. I'm not. Even, I'm telling you, there's never been a thing that has a spreadsheet that I've lost money in. We just you, always. But did you make the spreadsheet or did no? You never, no, never. Exactly. Does it look? <laughs> <laughs> look like I can make a spreadsheet. I'm not a spreadsheet maker either. It I don't even know how to add up. I said I said spreadsheets to, to Maria sometimes. She gets and, excited about it. I know, but then I'm like, I she's like, can you add it up? I'm like, add what up? Add it up. A, can she's you like, there's a button. She some. taught me about this thing. It's like it looks like a backwards three. It looks like it's <laughs> from I, another I, kind that's of language. Her art form, actually. I, I can't even get Benny to put the podcast schedule in a spreadsheet. He texts group chats i did I just, and he's like this group chat at this yeah. time this group chat at this time and then i just put it in the spreadsheet well That's we're it. the same kind of chaos i make everything in phone notes and i'll send it to her and she's like appalled did you see uh, i mean maybe a little off topic i'm assuming you, you have an iphone yes did you see the uh the journal that they added in the no. newest no. version no so there's a journal and i started using journal over phone notes really uh, uh, does that have more organization tabs in it or something <laughs> No, I just, for whatever reason, and this is it's really newer. stupid, when it's new, I'm like, oh, I'm the first journal user. Like, I'm using journal in the first week. Like, Early when I'm using yeah. notes, it's yeah. like people have been doing notes for, like, 10 years, 12 years. Dude, you're journal. so early. I'm, I'm day one. I'm day <laughs> yeah, one journaler. Using journals. But this it's nice because, like, I, I a, how we build. at the end of the day at 11 o'clock, I get a notification. And it's like, oh, do you want to write anything in the journal today? And I just kind of brain dump, like, everything. That's kind of nice, Maria, We should be using that. Yeah, let's it, do it. it. It just it just came out like in iPhone 17, uh, iOS 17. I probably need to update my phone. I'm also Definitely. one of those people. It's like, Same. So I saw <laughs> what, a tweet what iPhone about do you it. have? The new, whatever the newest one is. Oh, so you're up to date now. I don't know. The titanium one. It, it doesn't automatically like you got to go. No, no, I'm settings. saying the phone. Like I don't have a 15. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, my other one was completely well, shattered. Like the the glass on the back of it, like literally would cut. Twitter spaces kill phones. They destroy them. I have a 12, a 13, and a 15 all in my house because. The 12 and the 13 have been ruined from Twitter spaces. Back when we were Wait, hosting in 2021. Because you're what? using so much processing power of these phones. It's like, they Dude, used to get hot. Your battery life like is like four hours after. If you do it spaces all day with your phone plugged in all day. I mean, how is it? Can we do a class action about, against this? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, Against uh, Twitter or Apple? Yeah, again, I guess we could try I both. feel like it's like Twitter's tech. Like, Do you remember when I the think screen would turn purple? Like yes. you would be in a space and your whole phone yes. would look like you dropped it and you got a It looked like it. an X copy piece almost. Like you're like, this is a rare, uh, yeah. rare glitch. Yeah. So going back to Solana for a yeah. second, you originally got into Solana as an artist, right? Like yep. you were like, hey, this affords a whole new set of things that I can't do on ETH. I, I bought a piece from you on there. Yep. Which I lost. These as well. Which, which I lost the wallet. I think I have two or three. Yeah. I don't know. What no, I, I lost the wallet. Be I Benny's the wallet organ is like Maria. I you, can't even imagine. You, you should hire her <laughs> to organize. Well, your the best so thing is he had like he'll form. just like we'll be, we're in a group chat and he'll just be like Ian, 
Like, yeah. do you do this? <laughs> he's like, which wallet? I'm like, I don't know. I no wallet idea. 37. That's terrifying. Wallet like, terrifying. <laughs> so imagine, you know, a normal MetaMask account, you can generate as many wallets as you want off one seed. But Benny has like 36 laptops that all have different seeds. Yeah, exactly. And, and then, then multiple wallets. On and then those. each one has 50 wallets inside. Remember, I had to find that piece you sent me, and I like, I was like, all right, let me go. I took you go, like 45 minutes. Well, I had to go through like eight computers. How <laughs> much? How many do you think you have lost? Oh, I lost a lot. He, he finds stuff that like he I forgets. Like he probably has, like a folded up piece of paper honestly, somewhere, like, and like that. Yeah, I have like pieces of paper all over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I. That sounds like the most secure way. <laughs> yeah, they though. can't. I'm, I'm it's un, like I'm no un- one ha- could I'm, ever. Yeah, I'm un- I don't want to say I'm unhackable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It'd be really hard to hack me because you would have to find like everything. He can't. He can't even hack himself. Yeah. It would literally. Yeah, yeah, literally. Needs no, I lose everything. So therefore. But how did um? So going back to like. You got involved with Solana. You were like one of the first people that I knew who was doing stuff. That's why I picked up some of your art back in the summer of 2021. What made you go from him just releasing art and following ecosystem to like, I want to be full time? Like, did you meet um, the co founders of Exchange and you vibe with them? Or was it more of like uh, you're looking at the ecosystem, seeing what companies are coming up, and then you're sending out feelers? Or like, how did that? Yeah, a little bit of both. is not really asking a real question. Were you in bed with SBF? <laughs> yes, absolutely. No, uh, it started off just as DJ at first, because like yeah. I was like, I, I started off as many know like making discords. Like that was like when my genesis into into crypto, if you would, uh, or NFT world. Sorry, and then um, it was like, all right, now like with I was selling my own art as well, so I was like starting to make a little bit, and I was like, now how do I turn this into more? Mm-hmm. Right, that was like obviously what that's what you do here. Uh, <laughs> So, I have a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever, ever heard of this? Um, so that I was like, all right, let me go, let me go DJ in a little bit in this ecosystem. It was brand new. I saw a couple people I respected talking about it. Went over and I was like, okay, I, I see that there's not much here yet. And like after being on ETH, I was on ETH for a while already. I saw kind of the way things developed. But what I noticed is like artists and collectors didn't really have as much of a voice as I, I personally would want mm-hmm. because really artists and collectors and people who are funding it are the ones funding this whole movement. So why would a, why would someone not listen to them? Right? Like I, I never had the experience where I felt like open sea was listening to my feedback. Mm. Yeah. Right. Like, so I went over to this ecosystem and it didn't matter if it was an art platform, if it was a uh, whatever minting protocol, whatever people were willing to listen and willing to get into long discussions about it. Hop on a video You're call. You're saying Solana team also, right? Like it started like from foundation level all the way to just normal people building great. on yeah, yeah. the Which network. I've heard a lot of good things about the Soul team is that they they really put a lot of time and effort into into building a business. Absolutely. Name. Yeah. And it was kind of a big like jump for me too because I was doing well at that time on um on eth i had just helped launch rug radio's like community strategy plan and helped them launch their discord Mm -hmm. it was great i was like this is this is so cool like and then i got this feeling i just had to go with it and like i i just saw farouk in miami and he goes he he was talking to someone else and then he like literally he's like hold on one second came over to me he's like dude just want to say i really respect like you following that intuition and he's like you were early maybe too early (laughs) <laughs> but, but you didn't you were quit early. because you were too early. Like some people get to the place yes. they need to be too early. Yeah. And then they don't last long enough to see through like right. what they were actually early did, to. Did, yep. did you was this a last ditch effort that if this didn't work out, you would have to be a, become a plumber with Maria's father? <laughs> was no. it like one of those things where it's like, okay, this is my last chance, and Maria's like, yeah, if soul doesn't work out, get your <laughs> Get, get your, your galoshes on. on and your boots. Well, I was already doing really decently on ETH, to be honest. Like, I didn't have a, I didn't go to Seoul with like this mentality of like fight or flight. Yeah. Right. You know right. what I mean? Like, I went there with like, let's go have some fun and explore and see what happens. And then that's how you kind of have to go into it. Yeah. Too, if if it, you go in trying to force a trade, it doesn't work, right? Like, because yeah. you start to think of your expectations and results and then you play yourself. I will say, though, I think there was a point. Because Keegan, you worked in the music industry for years, yeah. and then COVID hit, yeah, and it was like, yeah. am I going to have to be a plumber? <laughs> or like, not not realistically. Are you but like, like a hands on? Next? Like you were doing lighting and stuff. No, before, it just happened like... to be that Maria's uh, father <laughs> is the king plumber of Staten Island. <laughs> oh, okay. So therefore, it's like you know he's going to have to be as a son in law the the but yes, prince. Of he was hands on yeah. stage management. Um, mm-hmm. So when COVID hit, and it was like no more live music. Oof. I feel like it was the perfect opportunity for you to segue into yeah. 
crypto and NFTs. And I think for a lot of oh, us, that's how you it, got yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, it that's that, everyone. That was the moment. We're just sitting home doing nothing. And, and I think for, for Keegan also, like, I have to say this, like, your intuition with ours, you and I have a lot of conversations about this. Like, and we talked about this last podcast about being a patron and the relationships with artists. That I know always drove you. And I think you always said to me that the thing that you loved about Soul was that you were able to create those connections yep. with artists. And now what was so nice was when you did the, the spaces with these, and all of a sudden all these artists came on and you talked about these artists that are now saying how successful they were and how many recognize the fact that you were somebody who built that sort of foundation. I mean, like that's exactly what we were talking about last time. It's like, there's if that's what everybody is doing in this space, what you're doing, then that's how we're going to be more successful. The idea that it's on soul and it's a different chain, I don't think that even matters. Right? It never really mattered to me. Like that's That's why like I never forced the topic, you know what I mean? Like I was just like, I see a thesis. I see that it could be beneficial for creators. I'm just going to stick with it, you know, right. because I think people have an illusion of what scaling is here in yeah. this space. And they're like, it has to be immediately the peak of the mountain, right? Like it has to go like nifty gateway summer immediately. And it's like, in reality, that has theoretically proven to not be that sustainable when things light up that quickly. You have like one to three months and then it's over. Right, exactly. <laughs> and like, that's what I like. I kind of like the idea of like, translating hype into longevity and like that's something that has been big with me with all of solana especially like the recent weeks but like even before right we well, had a, this we is had not, another this is boost. not coming out for two months so by then it could all be over i hope so yeah I, like, i'm yeah, ready to soul? take a nap if you were to look at listen they're like wait what was soul no it'll be not okay well that's I'm, the best I'm, thing about it not being a flash in the bucket yeah, yeah. right I'm, I'm, I agree. I'm too over allocated for it to be yeah, yeah exactly. i think we all i think we all are at this point um, but also i think that what they're building in the ecosystem there, like so i'm not trading i gotta ask so. maria during the dgen summer 2021 were you also dipping your toes into oh, the yeah. the dgen streets uh no i'm not a dgen by any means I collect my friend's art. That yeah. is like the only way I do it. But the general in other ways, not will without. say I was in NFTs before Keegan was. He was yep. in crypto before I was, but it's I was true. in NFTs before Keegan was. Wow. Um, well, I wouldn't be here in this space without her for full full on. Not even a doubt in my brain. So what got you into him and what made you drag Keegan in? Back to Dave Krugman. Because <laughs> back to Dave. <laughs> but that, that no, really back to Jay and Silva. Yeah. Um again early Instagram days we had gone back a long time and he called me and he was like oh uh well I can't remember what came first we did work on this DJ premiere drop on mm -hmm. Nifty Gateway I helped produce that with him um I was in the Animus Lounge on Telegram yeah. and he was like I really want you to get on a call with me and Dave and this guy Roger Dickerman mm, and it was right before Roger was about to launch Artifacts gotcha and he wanted to do a billboard takeover in Times Square oh right yeah that was, I think that was my first like yeah. big NFT. That was. Can we talk it was, about right? that? Can we talk about so that? So it was April, yeah. I want to say, 2021. Yeah. Okay. And I was like, again, Google. I'm like, oh, <laughs> you can buy billboards in Times Square. But like, did I have a contact? <laughs> no. <laughs> Professional um, Googling is really the but game. But I reached out. I got some pricing. I found the guys who drive the LED trucks around with commercials on the sides of them, projectors. Like I found this whole plan. We put it together for Roger. We helped him um, create a video that featured all of the different artifacts, sculptures, and all the first, I think the first like 25 to 30 artists. And it was like my first intro to Thank You X, to Bill Ellis, to mm. Blake Catherine, mm. to Fuck Render. Yeah, mm. like Ross Cassetti. Um, like that's mm. the, yeah, Cassetti, the first like, wave. The first so wave. So I was like, this is amazing. These artists are amazing. Then we like did this whole thing. It went so crazy on Twitter, the like whole Times Square takeover. Yeah. And Keegan was like, oh, okay, this is cool. <laughs> and I feel like that, right? No. I don't know. Maybe no. not. No. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I did think that was very cool, but that wasn't where I, I came in. But he, you were already in. But anyway, so that was like really how I got like super involved. Then I was like all in. We, I wanted to do gallery events for crypto, for digital art, like all of that, that was like a huge entry point for me into digital art. Mm -hmm. um, 
and we were helping Roger with artifacts, like kind of getting the launch off the ground. And he was like, I think we really need a Discord. And I was like, oh, I know this guy who does Discord. <laughs> and I don't want to say he was my boyfriend at the time because I was like, oh, that's like... We're in a really professional them. ecosystem don't here. So like, exactly. So yeah. I, like, I don't think Maria is going to be like, I don't know this VPN. Uh, this might be over the line might for be over the line. Meanwhile, guys are like, well, here are my balls on fire. Like I said before, like on Twitter... And and Maria's like, well, that's my, my that's my boyfriend. It could this be is like a guy a, I know who does Discord. I know a guy. Um, He's a good guy. And yeah, that you you and Roger started working together. But yeah, really, I think that artifacts introduction was like my first like, whoa, this is so cool. This art is so amazing. And by the way, funny story. The reason why eight 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 blocked me is because <laughs> of Maria. Yeah. So Maria. Well, it was because of Benny's own actions. <laughs> okay, but to be fair, it was I was sticking up for Maria. Maria also did a takeover for Billboard for eight eight eight. Uh huh. And he didn't. And he didn't. And he didn't pay her. He didn't pay one of my vendors. One of the vendors, and it was a while. And then I made a comment on Twitter about not paying the vendor, and then he blocked me. Oh, he was flexing about a big purchase, and you said correct. Yes. Yeah. And then he paid the next day, right? He did pay the next day. Yeah. Yes. He blocked me. Sounds like um, yeah. some other people who also have not paid vendors that we know about. There's a lot of people who haven't yeah, paid. Yeah, a lot it's, of people what, in the yeah. space. Is that common on your end? It's like, not. You know, I've been working in production for 10 years. I've never had a client, like, not pay the, like, AV company that we rented, you know, video yeah. cameras from. Yeah, that's crazy. It just, like, does not happen. And they want to know why Web3 has a bad name. Um, <laughs> but I think in Web3, it's like... I think a lot of founders think money is fake because you know what I mean? I, yes. I, maybe I'm wrong, but like, I, that's how I feel. It's like, Oh, it's like, Oh, we'll just like make more of it because that's how it went in the beginning. <laughs> yes, I think that's what it is. I think it's like, okay, what I'm going to do is this will cost me 50,000. Like that's easy. I have a hundred thousand, but what I'll do is I'll make that hundred thousand to 300,000. So when I give yes. the 50,000, I owe it, then it's going to be nothing. And then they get there and they're like, wait, I had a hundred thousand, but now I only have, Forty thousand. <laughs> the summary so of that is basically free. Right. It's, it's, <laughs> basically that's free. exactly how it degen. It's girl means. math. Yes. Degen math is the same thing as girl math. Girl You're math. right. Um. So I think that's so different from what like traditional production mentality is, where it's like this is the budget. This is the budget we're going to spend. Um, yes. And I think that like we've seen that in the space for the last three years with ha umpteen amount of brands who fooled it. Agreed. And I think like, you know, when we did NFTC, one of the things you and I had said and you said to me, like, we need to make sure we had the money beforehand. We did. And, and, and it was nice because we didn't have any of those worries. And it was a great event. I mean, the best part of the event, I think that we both agree on, by the way, you should know these, is when we were in the theater and right, right Maria's going to back me up because I know she feels this way. And you were showing all your art and we had the weed drinker giving out and everything. When everybody started clapping, it, it was like the theater was full. I full. It was like standing. It. Remember, it was like everybody was yeah. standing and they couldn't find seats around the floor. And everybody was clapping and cheering for the art that came up on this movie theater screen. I remember Marie and I were like, this is why we did we this. Did this is why we did this. Like, to like it was give such a great artists yeah. who've never showed their work publicly a screen that big mm -hmm. of quality, like a screen of quality without borders, like the it whole was crazy. thing with their it name like, on with it. With the music. Yeah. yeah. It's and like it was incredible. like every piece had enough time to be to seen. Breathe. It wasn't like a rush. It was it was really a nice moment. Was that 2022? 22, June. That was 22, yeah. June, whoa, that feels like a lifetime Five years ago. ago. So now... Marie, I go back and watch that video every yeah. few months to remind myself of why I'm here. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, it's just like... And Benny was such an advocate. It was like mm. one of the first big events I had done in the space. And Benny was, I wanted to wring his neck like the whole time. But I like, <laughs> am so confirm. happy I listened you, to him. You like had so many different movie theaters and they crazy. all had their own programming. Yeah. And then you had like all the drinks, it was the eight, bar. It was eight theaters. It and on lot. top of that, you Maria had really Benny calling it. At any time of the day, three a.m. With a new idea. Benny just got out of the bathtub. It's three a.m. He's yeah. coming down off mushrooms. So I can't remember oh, so if it was this one or not. But yeah. at one point, you called Maria and you go, "Could you find someone to shoot me out of a cannon?" And I was <laughs> oh, like, that was, "Yes, <laughs> something I did. Else. Okay, that was but actually for something else." Did you but that was true. draw the line. I there. still wanted to get no. No, I, she, I, she yeah. looked. That's the she person she, she is. She looked. She Maria exhausted all resources. All resources. So you should know. Two months from now, when this comes out, Maria and I are already gonna. You're going to be coming out of a cannon. So uh, Maria is producing a new uh, show that I'm doing with Dave Krugman. And 
I'm going to make her life miserable for the next year. <laughs> we are, and no, we're excited. We're going to take artists around the world, right? And we're going to be visiting either their hometowns or places they were inspired. So I, so I'm, I'm already well aware of working with her, but we work so well together that I am really super And once I realized, I think that like you are like crazy ideas yeah. are for the artist. It's right. for, it's like, not for you. No. And if you always say, and by the way, I think you've also learned, like, if if I give you an idea and you're like, yo, that's fucking not happening, I'll be like, okay, and let's yeah. go on to something else. <laughs> Instead of being like, all right, maybe I have to look into this. You could, like, if it's not going to work now, I, I just sometimes need to be told, like, by yes. you or Amira. Yeah, I was going to say, this is why we get <laughs> right? married. Right, this is why we get yeah. married. Like, Amira, that's why she likes you, loves you so much. Like, you know, or Sam's, like, I remember I was, had this idea once with Sam about something, and then Sam... Text me, he goes, next, when we have him on the podcast, I'll tell the story. He goes, yo, listen, uh, I don't think that was a good idea. I said, why? He's like, well, I asked Rachel and she said it was really bad idea. <laughs> that, and we should have passed it. it by her. And I'm, I was like, yeah, we probably should have yeah, passed that it by might her. Not be a good idea. So like, you know, I think um, talking about that, you guys are a couple. And I think that there's a lot of couples in our space that a lot people of don't know about. Power couples. A lot of power couples, a lot of artists that work together. Absolutely. Uh, a lot of people like yourselves who are in like, uh, sorry, I would say patrons and builders. How is it working together in this community? Because I find it to be like, I always rely on my wife for everything. I show her all the art. I run everything through her. She probably wants to kill me like you, but <laughs> there's something about having that like sort of partnership and person to rely on that really helps you build yourself stronger. Yeah, I agree. I, I think that this is the best we probably have ever worked together because I also was in the event world before through live music production and such. And not saying that we didn't work well together then, but I think both of our intensities were two in the same thing then. Uh, and I think now, since we're on different sides of the coin, we can really fill each other's perspective well. And for me personally, I think it's been working really great. And like I said, I wouldn't have even been here without her and like meeting the New York, like the dominoes kind of fell since the early days, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so I think in that capacity, it, it works really great because we don't really have to step on each other's toes. No, and it's, it's, it's really just nice to be like, oh, like, have you heard of this person before? Do you know, do you mm. follow this person? Like yeah. have like a one source of like trusted truth, mm -hmm. um, or to like gossip to be like, oh my God, <laughs> guess what this person said? You know, it's like perfect dinner yeah. conversation yeah. to be able to like compare notes about things um we will go out sometimes though and be like all right we're not going to talk about nfts tonight we're not we're not going <laughs> to talk about work we're not going to talk about our friends tonight you know? and then all of a sudden like like 10 minutes passes and we're like so about the the giants <laughs> the giants this year huh so, and it's like okay and let's go ahead and talk about it so NFTs it's funny tonight. mira once said to me and she came up to me she said i just she's like i talked to her a lot about work and school and I stopped. So she went there. She's like, you, uh, you talk way too much about school. I need you to like talk about other things with me. I said, okay. Oh, got it. So then Web3 came along and all I talked about is Web3. And recently she goes, can we go back to talking about school? <laughs> 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 she's like, this is too much. But, yeah, but in the end, like then I, 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 I took a time. I was like, okay, fine. You want to talk about Web3? So it was like, there was like this two week period. I didn't tell her anything that's going on. She's like, so what's going on? In the space. I was like, well, you told me you didn't want to talk about it. She's like, you're in the sober. Do you now, understand right? how this works? How women, we don't tell you things and want you to listen. Like we just want to tell you that we're upset. And I was like, oh, okay. So that's but, a, that's a interesting relationship dynamic that took me a little bit to figure out too, yeah. is like when Mrs. D's is venting or something. And it's like, she doesn't want me to like solve the problem. She just wants to Wait, get Wait, you guys out. have learned that? Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, I'm I, still... <laughs> I still you forget. Got time, so. I forget every yeah. other day. You no, know? Well, you forget. It's hard. You have to like really. It's but I do catch myself like three words, and I'll be like, I actually should not speak anymore. You guys will see if it gets even hard harder because once you have children, it's Ooh. like it brings a whole new layer to it. It's it's the best layer. Like I I I absolutely love my children. Everybody knows that. And, and, and they're great. Like this morning, they were all in our bed together. And it's like those moments are. Sometimes they wake you up like six. Well, it depends. Like if they're throwing up at night, you know, because they're always somehow fucking sick. <laughs> like kids are just always sick. And Do then you, you get, get more you sick. sick. What? Do you get more sick now with oh, the kids? Dude, get ready. Yeah. It's going to, you guys, all, all three of you are going to see. All you're going to do is you're going to be sick all the time. And here's the worst part about it your kids are going to get like strep. Okay. 
and in 17 hours they can run a marathon. And then, then they're going to give you strep and you're going to be sick for like two weeks. You're like, I don't understand. I built my <laughs> immune system up. And like they bounce back. It's like they fall downstairs and they just walk away. And like they, there's something about being that young and you just survive. And adults, I'm like, well, I don't know if I'm going to make it tomorrow. <laughs> so like, yep. but it does bring an extra layer. But I, will, I you know, being married for me in, in, cause we're, this is our episode is about talking about relationships because you guys are in a relationship. I love it. And, you know, he has such soft hair. I wash my hair every day. Oh, he, he washes his hair. What, what do we use? What kind of conditioner? Whatever Le she's got. What? Le Lavo. Le Lavo? Mm -hmm. Is that from Italy? Uh, it's I think, from a, I think a it's small French. hill. I don't know. New York? <laughs> Should I shock these and tell him? Do what? you know I used to have hair like this? It's true. He showed me pictures. I, I did. And he also used to not have a beard. I never had a beard. I said I had just long hair with no beard. I mean, have you seen the picture of me with hair longer than good? Yeah, you showed yeah. me that one. The one where wow, you were in the suit? Really? Is that the one where you were in a suit? Yeah. Well, before the suit. I okay. have the before and after. Yeah. I, I'll show you after. I, I had hair down to like my mid chest. Yeah. Um, it looked like I was in like a D tier metal band. That's that me Played too. in front of like 15 people. <laughs> did you play an instrument as a kid? No. Uh, I took two weeks of French horn lessons. Sick. Sick. French uh, horn. Long story short, they went to our elementary school with all the different mouthpieces yep. of all the instruments. Yep. You That's... blew on it, and whatever one you could natively make a noise with the best. They like, said you were a pro at that. Yep. Like, Same thing happened to me. They were like, oh, you're <laughs> Wait, not... what's going on? Wait, you both grew up in the Midwest, right? I grew up in Florida, but North Florida, but just basically similar energy. like Yeah. yeah Northeast Ohio. Yeah. Um, anyway, French horn is what mouthpiece I used the best. Wow. I took two weeks of lessons, which was like four lessons. And I just quit. I was like, this, I'm in This is choir. not for me. And then I can't sing. Wait, you were in the choir? But I can't sing. Like, I'm, you had to do a music. Yeah, yeah, I remember this. Like, there's no, like, oh, you can just not do music. It's like, you're going to do well, orchestra. Well, because they made you take a music class. You need, yes. like, a, one credit of music. I do yeah, three like, years of music. You do three years of music. Yeah, so you sang for three years? Yes. How, that, that must be. Well, of course, it's easy because there's a lot of other people. Like, did you play an instrument? I did. So my claim to fame was, like, on the mouth test, I could play any instrument. Oh. Wow. It was good. Wow. And that's why you guys are married. But guess what I did? <laughs> I said, <laughs> that, that's good. So the one thing I couldn't do that well is what I did. I went and did drums instead. He was so. a drumline boy. So the oh, really? Drums you were like drumline? Yeah. I couldn't play an instrument. Did you, you play an instrument? walk Me? on yeah. I was the dancer. drums yeah. in my oh, school okay. because mm -hmm. it was I the most demanded. You had to have lessons before for oh. drums. Wait, for drums? To be on drums. Interesting. every kid wanted to be a drummer. They did do a test. Like, it was like a basic rhythm test. That's so weird. Uh, of, like, that. play this rhythm. And if, if you could do it by ear, then they were like, all right, this kid can learn something. I played like, a little piano when I was a kid for, like, a year, and then I stopped. But I just picked up an instrument, and now I know how to... I'm, I'm, uh, maybe I'll try to bring ocarina? it to Ocarina? I, I could play the ocarina. Wait, really? From that was Zelda. just a guess, actually, but I'm glad. Yeah. Is that, like, the recorder? No, from Zelda. And I know how to play the Zelda. It is similar to I can a play recorder, the Zelda but it's like an songs. Orb. I'm getting it's hard because I. Where, are you uh, self taught? Um, yes, actually wow. I am. I mean, Ollie gave me some pointers. I was okay. playing it all wrong for a while. I found out, and then Ollie's <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, I was right. inhaling instead. Of, <laughs> <laughs> but um, um, maybe I'll if I can't play it this time by April, I'm going to be able to play the Zelda tune. Like you know the Zelda. Remember when they played the little? Oh yeah, yeah. That I I can play that now. We should have you open for Ollie next event. I, by the way. No joke. He's gonna actually get on a collab track. Yeah, I would. I would do that. I would think about opening I've, for all. I mean, yeah. I don't not? have the rhythm. I'm have very. You I'm tone deaf. If you see me dance or do anything oh, that I requires dance. rhythm, it, did you play just, sports? Uh, not well. Yeah, not me either. It's no. like you know, it's hard to tell. Um, this arm is completely fucked up. Like I can't bend it more than this. Uh, I broke it twice when I was a kid. Mm. Wow, how'd you break it? Uh, really stupid. First time I was petting. Uh, our cat had kittens. I was petting a kitten. Wait, hold on. <laughs> Where is this going? You were petting kittens? Yeah. Okay. Like we had, like, imagine you have a cat yeah. and it has kittens. Yeah. And you're petting a kitten and the cat is protective of the kitten. So the cat jumped on my back. Yeah. And then I was in the kitchen and I fell and then my arm got hung up on a wooden chair. Oh. So it didn't break Ooh. all the way through. It like bent. So that's why like it, it never grew back correctly. I, I, yes. This is the, I have ne I'm telling you right now. <laughs> There's 7 billion people on this planet. You are the only person who ever broke their arm that way. That is the strangest <laughs> story ever. The, the second, I was petting a well, kitten petting a cat. in the kitchen. A kitten, near, not even a cat. Kitten. It's like a game of Clue. It's like yeah, I was in the I kitchen mean, wow. with the kitten. That explains a lot why you got to NFTs. <laughs> well, so <laughs> I, unbelievable. He stayed away from crypto kitties. Yeah, he was like, I'm not yeah, doing yeah. this. <laughs> 
Can't shoot. Yeah, I, I skipped the kitties. But uh, you have cats now. Yeah, I love cats. Right. Uh, so I'm anyway, very I, allergic I, to I, I got the cast off after eight weeks, and then I was at my babysitter skateboarding and broke it skateboarding. Oh, my God, right after? Yeah, and, like, the babysitter calls my mom, and she's like, same you're, spot. You're not uh, like seven or within ten centimeters of the bed. Oh my god! Wow. So, long story short, like I've never, th- I can't shoot a basketball correctly anymore, like because my elbow comes in, right? Like, and I didn't learn how to do things with my left hand. Um, so like I can't do. Are you left-handed? No, I'm right-handed. right-handed okay. Even though my right arm is like right, you can so, still do what you need to, like right. I can so, use so a mouse and a keyboard. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Like, I know what you're thinking. So yeah. Yeah. I was yeah. very bad at like every sport, and like coaches would be like, "Your form's fucked up," and yeah. it's like I didn't realize until later on in my life when I was trying to do barbell workouts, and every time I like bench 125 oh. pounds, my elbow hurts. Oh like, my god! It's like your chest doesn't work out, but your elbow feels right. like it's gonna snap, and you're like, "That doesn't feel right." Like, let me get something there. I had a similar story, except I didn't break anything. It was just terrible at sports. Oh yeah, well, I mean, yeah. I, I think that's I, most I think people. Even yeah. if I, yeah, for sure. If me. I didn't fuck up my arm, I would still be bad at sports. I'm not giving myself <laughs> an out of like, oh, I would have been good. I'm still fucking very uncoordinated. You know, wouldn't have been good. Yeah, I but it, it made it. I ex- gave up on my sports stream when they tried to cut my hair. So I was like really good at soccer. Mm. I was on this traveling team. You would have been fine with long hair and soccer. I, exactly. That's what I said too. But apparently I was you good playing at with the two. I was I was really good. I I played defense and you're sweeper. Still, you're not you're not you could still pick it up. You never know. No, my leg's too weak now. I broke my leg eventually after that. Skateboarding. So, uh, Skateboarding. But I, it does that too. I had this lady who she took it way too seriously. You know the classic Florida trope. She was like wrinkly, smoker, like frazzly she talk hair. Like this. Talk like that. Yeah. And she, but she was the best soccer coach. Like it was crazy. Like she had a cabinet full of trophies. She got a ton of kids into like you know scholarship programs. Like she was it. So we're at we we were on a winning streak, and I guess she had a bad morning or something. We're at practice, and she would segregate. It was like an open thing, but she would segregate the kids who were shitty at soccer and the kids who were good, and be open about it. Be like, maybe one day you get to practice with those kids, like that kind of woman. So I guess I was fiddling my hair too much this day. It was really windy. And, I, you know, I had the classic hair pulled back thing, as soccer players do. She comes up and grabs me by the back of my hair with scissors and starts trying to cut it. And uh, my mom was there. It was like the end of practice. And she like, went up to the lady. I was like, no, 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 no. And my, that was the last time I played soccer. It was Yo, like, these I don't stories. know that story. Oh, my God. That's the first time I've ever heard that so one. You've always oh, had hold long on, hair. Hold on, hold on. I've always had long hair, Did- yeah. So she tried to cut your hair with scissors on the field yep. with your mom. <laughs> yep. Is she arrested in jail at this no. point? In the, in the 90s. I know, 90s like, you could do whatever you want. If you were Florida. a coach, yeah, you were basically Florida. the kid's parent. Like, exactly. And yeah, like you, and you were yeah. better than a parent because you could get that kid into college but potentially. You, you know, like Because <laughs> right. like, if you're doing a sport, it's generally because you can't pay for college yeah. without also, a scholarship. back in the day, I feel like 80s and 90s, things were different. Very. Right? Like, yes. The if I came wave. back home after camp and I was wearing a splint... My mom wouldn't even notice. No. You had a good time. Now, eh? if like, you fall and you scrape your knee, you have to call the fire department, the lawyers, the parents, but the not lawyers. in Florida. Florida is still the same. Well, okay, I think, Florida is weird, 90s. man. They eat people's faces and stuff <laughs> exactly. like that, right? Well, that was OG Florida. That was like my era of Florida. It's, mm-hmm. I don't know if it's, it's a, got. It's not as bad anymore. I think it's just a different version of weird. It's like constantly morphing into a different. I feel like version. we gotta unpack that. You said eat people's faces. Do you mean like oh. on those drugs? Like yes. the bath people, salt. the yeah, bath yeah, the bath salt. Like he ate the guy's face. Like he. That was when I was. That's like when I graduated high school, and that was like all in the news articles, and I was just like. Okay, Not I think I'm gonna leave there. Florida. Yeah. No, like yeah. that's I left Florida as soon as I could. I started I worked for like a lighting company, just like the most basic of jobs, and the company moved from Jacksonville, Florida to Louisville, Kentucky. And I was like, that's my cue. And I just was like, sorry, mom, like I'm gonna do this. And she's like, actually, please leave. Like, this is a bad place for you. <laughs> like, they always here. say his whole family always like the best decision Keegan ever made was leaving Florida. Yeah, that's how I feel about my I hometown. think the best decision was... I've heard a lot of people like that with hometowns. Thanks, Benny. You're I, knew, I knew very early on that, you know, probably in high school, like freshman year of high school, it's like, I got to leave. Yeah. Like, something doesn't feel right here. There's it's, just no opportunity in my no, hometown. I mean, it's just weird. Like, listen, I like... I, I, Florida and and um, and LA and California, two, same thing for me. I love to visit them. I love to hang out. I can never live there. But I've heard people say that about New York also. For me, though, I don't know. I, there's something about New York and bringing up children here. Like, I just absolutely fucking love it here. It's, a, it's the yeah. most, I, I, like, yeah. 
melting pot experience you there's can like, have and yeah, then there's, there's a like, certain like energy in dude, the they city build tunnels. like you have it you have that like you were around here mm. energy did you see any did you guys have any tunnels in staten island no I tunnels in staten island no not but that, i mean not, not that, that you know, know of. of i feel like the italians have the tunnels in yeah staten well we island, last time we were talking about if there was two people who would build tunnels in you know in an area like this it would be either italians or jews yeah so Big actually time. now that you say it Probably under like the landfill of Staten Island, there's like a crazy. Well, tunnel the whole entire—I don't know if you guys know this, but Staten Island itself is a landfill. Half of it. A yeah, park. It. it was. It's a park now, yeah. but mm. it was a portion. Listen, I'm not a Staten Island like lover. I didn't. Now go she up defends there, Staten Island. But I will say, it's, a it's not dump. a landfill. <laughs> that, that, it was, it it was a garbage dump. Like if you show up, it's just. Well, like, because <laughs> he's from he's from the rival island. You know, like Long it's Island. Long no, island we're really an island. You were not an island. You were a garbage dump. Became an island. So it's a very different thing. I was. My island was always an island. But our island was designed by the guy you know who designed call... Central Park. That's true. Denny is <laughs> acting. Borough of Parks. Denny borough of is... Parks? No, I'm not a borough of Parks. No, the island. Staten Island is the Borough of Parks. It is. There's is most, it really? Yes. Yeah, almost the entire Staten Don't you guys island. want to become like your own state? Listen, that would be cool. Don't, I don't associate if that means with less Staten taxes like than the rest of New York. I think I'm that was the thing. Yeah, I think, they, I think they want us to succeed from New York. Right? I'm cool with that. Well, they're called yeah. state and island. That's true. They are the states of the island. Wow. <laughs> they, they we could just drop why it long, in. Why Long Island it's is just, state island. It's just yeah. a Long Island. But I do, this I, is good. Yeah, I kind of love Long Island, but like I could see the Staten Island vibe there. I was I thinking like, well, if this ever, like, not that if it doesn't pan out or if I ever get like to a point where i'm like a little bored it's like local politics sounds fun that'll be the first one let's drop the in and become succeed. a state i remember what is we that were... post nft career yeah, like yeah. my, my into... senator arc <laughs> you try to do well enough in this space so that i can, can go can influence other spaces a... wait are you gonna run would you run for congress in staten island I got it. Like, I you hope know, not. You know who it is who got me into this? <laughs> oh, is... you're gonna be the first lady. That would be amazing. I just like hope we're not in Staten Island long enough for that to oh, be. Oh, now it's getting interesting. <laughs> Let's talk about this. What, what, what's, Where what's, are you going? Where do you want to go? What's wrong about Staten Island? Yeah, it's nothing. just. It's not too far. I don't know. It's not my people. Okay, so where are your people? Um, she wants to have an apartment in Manhattan. That ain't happening. <laughs> Maybe this cycle it will. <laughs> we we no, definitely we that's not where I'm spending my money. Solana 500. So, uh, Let's right. see how the Solana. I think it's goes. going to. I think it's a going to 850. And yes. Tobacco would be nice. Yes. So, so that you, can be so yours, you, and I'll so move far so away. So you want to be in Manhattan? No, not necessarily. Just like not Staten Island. Really anywhere okay. but Staten Island. But as long as my parents are there. But it's an I irrational like reason. How close like, do you to your parents? Eight like minutes. Eight minutes away. So they're so close. So we went there for for Christmas, and it was like the first time we were introducing our kids to it. And they loved it. I mean, they know what Christmas is. They watch like every movie, but it was like their first experience of it. They loved it. And then we went to Maria's parents' house <laughs> slash the North Pole because they have yes. like, you know, like in uh, Christmas Pole. vacation, the, he puts on the like the lights and they're so bright that like, you see them in the sky. It's pretty much her parents' house. Okay. Yep. So my kids have like, like the time there's of their lives. There's a six foot Grinch. Yeah. Um, they walk drama. inside and there's like this electronic <laughs> six foot Grinch that they were just pressing the button it's like dancing, every two seconds. Yeah. So they they are very close, but uh, it, how, my kids had the best time there. How was uh, the in law experience the first time you met them, and how long did it take from when you met touring and were together to when you actually introduced Keegan? It was pretty quick, but my parents were like. I think I brought him home maybe like three months into dating. Oh, wow. Uh, because we were so close as friends. So it yeah. didn't feel soon. Yeah. But I think my parents were like, oh, yeah, sure. Like that guy. That guy. You know, like they weren't really like, oh, this is going to no, be you, you, a thing. I think I you got think. lucky. You got good in-laws. I mean, she definitely got lucky. Oh, you meant me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, my, my dad loves Keegan. Yeah. He really does. Like yeah. he, Keegan just is so great at adapting to like what people, like meeting people where they are, you mm -hmm. know? And he like... My dad just wants to sit on the couch and like watch the Bear Jackson yeah. auction. And Keegan was yeah. like, "Oh, cars! I can do cars." Like her Marie's, da Marie's dad is like a typical like Staten Island like New Yorker guy, Brooklyn. But, Brooklyn. Yes. but you know, I'm New Yorker, I should say. He's like big. He rests and his you hands see on his belly. Him rest hands his belly, so you don't know if he's gonna shake his hands and knife you in the back or give you a hug. <laughs> so if he doesn't knife you in the back, he hugs you. He loves you. So it's like great. Never I in the back. Ne right in the front. <laughs> He would never. He's not that guy. He's he an would, honest guy. He would yeah. do it right in the front. Yeah. But you, yeah, you got lucky. My dad's with... not knifing anyone. No, he's not. I'm just kidding. Um, but yes, the, I think you got lucky with in-laws, and I love your family too. Yes. 
They I both have amazing families. You know, Benny is always talking. No, about my, mother, my mother-in-law. It's not. I just want to be. I want to be very clear here <laughs> on air. Yeah, yeah. On air, she's listening. While to I'm this. drinking wine, because she's never going to listen to this. But Amira probably will. But like, you know, this thing is like this. It's not that I have an issue with my mother-in-law. It's that there was a mistake. My mother-in-law has an issue with me. Exactly. I right. think that's what he was going to say. There was a mistake. That. And a happy mistake happened because my mother-in-law was created, and then a mere, and then and my wife came along. So uh, yes. there was this beautiful uh, this has a lot of redeeming part already. of the mistake. <laughs> but when this whole whoever was creating or doing, it was one of those things like someone pressed a button and it was like, oh, that, no, this wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> but you know, then from that at least they made these beautiful child and then grandchildren. So it things mm. happen, and I, and I don't have any issue with my mother-in-law. <laughs> Right, Maria? She didn't understand. Sounds like you love her. No, I do. I, 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 feel, I plead the fifth on this one if Amir is going to listen. I feel that we have a very good relationship knowing that we don't talk to each other. And that's, that's, that's fine. Right. I think knowing boundaries is important in yeah. life. Exactly. You know what I mean? like, it's like Solana. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You do have to know Break that one down for me. How is it like Solana? Your, your mother-in-law is <laughs> probably not like Solana. No, so my mother-in-law not fast is, and is cheap. yeah. So my mother, my, my mother-in-law is is literally Bitcoin. The top more like ordinal. She's Bitcoin. Are if any she, of our parents into cryptocurrency? Mine are no. not. Mine aren't, but my uh, father-in-law follows my Twitter account. Oh, okay, nice. Okay, and he's been he's very confused. He's been following my Twitter account for I think over two years now. Wow. So he's seen from the highs and lows. Whatever I tweet. Whether it was GM pictures or <laughs> whatever I'm doing, he's seen it, um, and he seems to love me. And my, you know, my wife is like, he loves you, but I'm always in the back of my head when I tweet something stupid, like, oh fuck, like my father <laughs> was gonna see that. I feel, yeah. Well, it's too late. You married his daughter, so there's not much you could do. But like, it. yeah, my my dad for Christmas got me like a plaque that says like D's director of vibes. And oh, it's really? like oh, my, my oh, siblings, my siblings follow me on Twitter, which is weird. It's bad. Like no, it's my, not. my, it's great. I, I, I don't know if my brother's listening. You're this. not that degenerate. No, but my, my brother, but my, my siblings, um, I was only a child for 14 years. Oh, so and they're younger. Now that I'm 30, my oldest sibling is 16. Right. And it's like, he's getting caught with vapes and like smoking weed and stuff. And it's like, well, I, I didn't smoke until I was 20. Right. I probably should have waited until I was 25, but like, it is what it is. But like, I don't really want to be like a... It definitely affects you. Like there's, there's is scientific fact that yes. smoking under 20... Under twenty five, under, 25, under smoking 25. weed, yes. smoking weed under twenty five actually affects your drinking and smoking. Actually, physically affect your brain, um, and it's like you can't dispute. You're yeah. welcome. Yeah, you can't dispute. So I feel like this bad influence on that yeah. part of my yeah. family. But they've seen everything that I've been able to do, and even if they don't fully understand it, it's like they know I'm not selling drugs or like right. doing it illegally, right. and they're like really proud of me. But like they don't really know what I do. But it's it's becoming more of like a public thing. It's like they don't, you know, at first understand like, well, how do you lose your job and just like not have a job for like the last six <laughs> right, months? Right. Like, what are you doing? Like, you're just doing a podcast. Like, how the fuck does that work? It's like, like when people come up to you and they're like, like m more so someone from that generation. They come up and like, so so what do you do? Yeah. I'm like, fuck. I always sigh. Here we go. <laughs> I'm trying to get to the point where I don't sigh beforehand. This is why I haven't quit my school job. Jess, Jess got mad at me because we were at um, Restoration Hardware getting a couch spec'd out. And the lady who was helping us asked what I did. And I said, oh, I'm fun employed. And she's like, you can't be telling people you're like unemployed <laughs> because like. They're not going to take us seriously. Like they're not going to be like, "Oh, you can spend whatever on that couch." Right? They're going to be like, "Don't sit just, on this couch." Just, sir. Say, like, just say you 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 you're a patron of art. Well, no, I, I started saying I'm an art collector. Yeah, art collector. But like, yeah. I thought it was fun to say that. And she's like, "No, like people are going to think of you yeah. like an idiot." Like, yeah, you're like those girls on TikTok. They're like, "This is my uh, fun employ day in my life, my fun employment." Like, yeah. <laughs> like, okay, maybe so. I never heard that fun employment. Oh, yeah. That's how I feel like what I am. It's like I'm not like I, I do three to four hours of work with Schiller a week. Like we do the pod and then I really just do what comes up. It's like, oh, this event came up. Like, let's go there. Oh, uh, Bitcoin puppets are hot. Like I like them. I'm going to buy 26. But I'm like, oh, this thing like 
I'm gonna do that. And it's I mean, just how could you not buy Bitcoin puppets? They're no, so, I mean they bring world <laughs> peace and they're beautiful. not not to. I can't you know. wait to see how that ages in two. Months. Oh, I I can't wait. Um, <laughs> well, by the time the podcast that's comes, what I'm saying. I, I, I just, by the time the podcast comes out, the transactions will actually have gone through for the sweep. <laughs> they're either gonna be under a hundred dollars or like over yeah. twenty five hundred. Right. There's like one of two ways. And what I told myself when I bought a lot of them was like, if these go to zero. I am still going to spam the group chat with these puppets. Yep. And like, I'm going to laugh hysterically. That's how you know it's a good purchase. So fuck it. Like there's Worth been it. a lot of yeah. things I bought that did not have that, uh, like feeling like whether it's sad, happy, funny, whatever, like these are yep. objectively hilarious. If you're a person who likes to smoke weed or any drug, really Sniff glue, or ketamine, or ketamine. <laughs> you know? Um, but anyway, I bought them. We'll see what happens. I'm going to keep like I, I have my avatars as them in all my chats now. Yeah. Like I'm I'm strapped to the missile. I think that the one I bought still is the best. I bought one that has a That's QR code. That's typically what people think. Well, I bought one that has a QR code. <laughs> and if you scan it, it takes you to another ordinal where someone inscribed a fart. It, wow. It's, it's, okay, that's kind of meta. It's I like an MP3 that. of a fart noise. Yeah. Wow. So you pull out your phone, you scan it. I hope it. it's not even one of the, I hope it's from like this classic soundboards, you know, like it's, early internet soundboards. It's like, you know, when you I, go to a website, like a fart, is, there a know, it's just is it a barrap style? And it's the audio bar. Ooh. Yeah. So that's what it is. Wow. And then you hit the play button yeah. and you're like, oh, what is this? And it's, pfft, and you're like, I have to find Good it. Of course, it, you're like, of course it is. Yeah. Here, you want to scan it? That's but actually a really good. Yeah, you have your I don't phone? have my. Get your no, phone out. I don't have my phone. Benny, phone. Benny is gonna make everybody scan this thing. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised you don't have it in your favorites. Like he the fact drain my wallet. He doesn't even know how fart. to make favorites. I on don't his really phone. know I'm how to make favorites. How funny would that be? It's a wallet drainer. He has it set up. It's a QR code. Yeah, and yeah, like, yeah. Oh, and we just like live wallet drain right now. Scan that. Scan that. Scan that, and it's gone. Ordinals.com. That seems like a really. No, put it. Put it to the microphone. Play it to the microphone. So that's the fine that's art. That's a tight part. Too. I mean, is that not the best? This is, this is how we build. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. Maria understands. This oh is how God. we build. Now, okay. Snowfro hates ordinals. I'm, like, I'm thinking about just sending him this one to his Bitcoin address. But because um, like it makes a fart sound. Uh, I mean, this like, is such a hate? good Satoshi it's on too. It's on Satoshi 9 billion. Oh, no, this is trillions. We're in the trillions. <laughs> This is not a low subscription. No, but I mean, I don't know. It makes a fart sound. I mean, the, <laughs> you're right. The sat is not the same as the inscription number two. So it's like right. not confusing. And then the thing that confuses me is why we're doing inscriptions on everything now. Like why? Oh my God. Why are we doing Ethereum inscriptions? Why are we doing Solana inscriptions? Like I bought. I love totally talking about Solana inscriptions. He was like, this is like taking like a high performance car, ripping out the high performance motor and then putting in like an old tractor trailer motor. It just doesn't like, make any sense. You know like, what? If it sells, anybody will buy anything. In this I, case. I bought a few of the Solana inscriptions just to see like how stupid are Wait, these? Which like, ones did you buy? Uh, the punks. Shit. I didn't buy them. <laughs> oh, they're, they're down like 80%. Like you, you're good. There was one. <laughs> that you didn't buy the ether. Punk ones, but you bought the Solana punk ones. Well, I learned my lesson losing. That's why you just buy the. the once you get bitties. scorned by well, one I, I fake didn't punk, know it's that, over. You know, normally when I buy something, my exit plan isn't. I hope that a prominent figure talks about this bag in a newsletter, and then I can right. dump on their followers. Like that's Maybe normally not an investment thesis. <laughs> it's not the investment piece. Okay, that's the word keyword. I not. I have bought a now, lot. Now, if that happens, I do seize the opportunity because. I'm a simple man. If I see a liquidity event, I take it. I, take I it. say this all the time. If we God, made this mistake once, we're not doing it again. <laughs> yes. And I've learned through, you know, probably like two dozen times of not doing it that like, yeah, when Elon tweets the my lady meme, I'm just gonna sell my my lady. Like That's how it is. When, when when Elon tweets sees the memes, I'm gonna sell every meme card I own. Like you just do it because Elon probably isn't going to tweet about it tomorrow. No. Um, if, if Gordon Goner buys your bag, you sell it. I'm still convinced that he is going to end up as the Steve Aoki of our cycle. Gordon? Yeah. Like he's going to hit the point because Steve Aoki's buys started off strong too. That's not for it. In the beginning when he started off, it wasn't the kiss of death. It, and wasn't, then it, became, it wasn't the doodle alien. Yeah. I think remember, it was the doodle remember, drop that did it. Like the, that was the, the final. Remember was that like, stretch between 2021 and, and 2021 and 22 that, Every NFT event that we went to, literally, it'd be like, what are you doing tonight? Well, I'm going to this event at 8 o'clock. And then I have one at 10. And I go to 8, and I go to 10, and Steve Aoki played at both of them. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
It was well, like every event had Steve Aoki. I was like, this well, is... Well, what's funny is it, it's going is back why. in time because we the same thing happened to us because we were in like pseudo-electronic world where it was literally like, oh, you know who's at this thing? It's like, oh, Steve Aoki. It's like, oh, God. So like <laughs> so the, the EDM like He's segment of the world everywhere. all went over here. Like same thing, Matt Medved, I knew him from the EDM world too. Like That's all so these funny. people Blau. were... were li- Blau. Yep, all these people were all over there. And then you like fast forward a little bit and it's like, oh, you guys are just going to the next thing. I like so, this. Like, so if Stevie Aoki starts buying Solana NFTs. Where are you at? Are you running? I'm terrible at NFTs, to be honest. <laughs> so like. You're not, not worth the tokens? I, I wouldn't run. I wouldn't purchase either. <laughs> like. You would take a break. I, I would sell. I would do exactly sell. like you said. I would sell if I owned it. I would sell it, and if uh, if I didn't own it, I'm not buying it because he did. Like what happens if Steve Aoki came to you <laughs> and said, "I want to drop on Exchange Art"? I probably wouldn't do it. So, like back in the Discord, crazy Discord days, I worked with a lot of like huge names. Didn't you work on his Discord? Mm, hey, not first? his. I did. Um, I I bid too high on that one, and they were they cheaped it out. Um, <laughs> Who was it? I did Sia's. Steve? I did the Sia project. Yes. But like working oh with management. Firms, I donated to that. I, I donated to that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, went I to, donated to that. Also. I signed to NDA. I don't remember what I signed it for. I'm just going to say it. Uh, we went to her house. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was like a petting zoo, yeah. uh, a movie theater. It's, it's sad because like she seems super nice and also she's like. She's very nice. She, I met her. And she's it seemed nice. like she, her team was like really like into this project. And then, I mean, it obviously went nowhere. I I, I don't. It's I feel like they're hard. a little bit different than friends with you because, yeah, I just think bit. their intentions <laughs> were a little bit better versus friends with you was just looking back now and seeing all those times we hung out with them and seeing what they were doing. It's Everything like, felt very transactional, like, very transactional in hindsight. Yeah. Well, and yeah. I think with a lot of those ar- the artists who did those like big drops and the peak of things. Yeah. At the end of the day, I don't think it was our community that fucked it up for them. No, I, it was their existing fans who like could not grasp it. Like it I don't still, necessarily agree with that. No, what do you? What do you? What was? I think what greed you, was the biggest culprit. It was like, oh my god, we can do this mint and then keep increasing the price. It was like, <laughs> you know, like the, the first celebrity thing started off as like point oh one. First free celebrity mint, mint ten dollar open edition. Second yeah, right. celebrity mint twenty five. And, and and it's funny because like you look twenty five hundred dollar mint. You look at like, different artists. Open right? edition, <laughs> but it's rare. It's so, rare. <laughs> it's right, open, it's rare. but it's rare. But like Damien Hurst released, the, I think stuck around. And that was that was cool. That's my better still, And he's still around with Henny, and he pops in and he drops some stuff, and you could tell that his look. I'm not saying that he didn't do it for. Know, for to get to make, make money, but you, you should al- you could also say that he you know he didn't leave. He provided right? a he lot provided, of value yeah, think, to the people who got in the ground floor. Yeah. By the way, I think he still does. Like you get like a, a, like a allow list if you for some of his stuff if you have a currency versus Daniel Ashram who fucking. You know, I don't know him from the whole Oh, right. I forgot that he, he like, did. Yeah, he like dro- dop- dropped all the stuff and then like left like a fart in the wind. And but I like, love his well, physical. So, like, I, 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 love don't, I don't care about his NFTs at all. But like, I have a Bulbasaur of his. I I, 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 I happen to love his stuff, and I, I don't. I guess like the question is like, you know, then people are going to argue, and I hear that they're like, well, what does the artist does the artist need to stay around and be your friend? And I I guess like the difference what I would say to that is like. Ashram, for, for instance, you're right. He doesn't. He dropped his stuff. He's an artist. He could go. But I would argue that then he didn't fully understand, in my in my opinion, what the ecosystem is about. No. Yeah, right? I, I agree. And I think that there's a level to artistry here where it inquires it's not just your art, but it's partly also community. Like I've said, I you saw my tweet I wrote about ordinals. It's like if you're gonna drop an ordinal, great. Like I have no problem. I want artists to make money. I keep telling artists right? not to. But, no, but <laughs> if, like, they, if they if they if they do have intention and yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Them too. exactly. If they want to do it, go ahead. But like understand what the blockchain is about. Like Ripcash spent months. Yeah. Figuring like, out look what at who crashes recent tr- Sotheby's. Yeah. It was very well thought out. He yeah. has yeah. something in it. He has the cursed inscriptions that are the child of the parent of what he minted. It's in the monster collection. Like. A lot of people minting ordinals, they don't know the parent-child provenance. They don't, they don't yep. know how to properly structure what they're doing. They're right. just like, I want to partner with this platform. I want to send them a you know, high-quality image of what I made, and then I want them to do all the tech stuff. And that's fine, but I don't feel like that really embodies what the ordinal community wants. 
like I think the, they want they want something a little bit different because also remember a lot of people who are not from Ether onto Ordinals right now are people that were on Bitcoin for a very long time. Look at the Forgotten Runes thing that just happened. I, I, it's blowing my mind at mm. the prices people are paying for this. I but it, it's a testament to how they number one minted them very early. They inscribed. Dota was. The Dota, first to, week of Ordinals, yeah, I mean, he was Bear, inscribing things. Baron knows nothing about technology, let's be honest. But he's, he's like me. But, but he's the, the he, glue guy. Like, he's the guy And who, he like saw it, and Dota like really got deep into it very early on, understanding dynamics and, 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 and the intricacies of it all. And I think like, like I agree But people you. are going to see that they just made five and a half million, and they're going to yeah. be like, we need to do something. And exactly, it's, that's the it's issue. Not, it's not going to work the same. Like, that's, the, that's why I had an issue with Ordinals originally, because... It, 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 in the early days, it was a lot of soul people who actually were yeah, really early on Ordinals. Yeah, yeah. And they still are. It's a huge scene from soul, yeah. which is fine. Like, I have nothing wrong with the technology. It's more, for me, I've, I've seen the game. Yeah. Intention. You know, it, it's intention, and it's also, like, how people are approaching it in this, like, way that's like, okay, that's hot. Let me extract as much as possible. Like, hmm. have we not learned that that doesn't make things last long? Like, no. like the more you extract quickly, No, but I think you have less... To go I agree, but yeah, I think you like, have to go through that cycle, like soul through that cycle. It's not you something through you can control. Cycle. Yeah, like, like it's you, just human nature. It just has to be part of the system in order to get to what's good. You have to go through the crap first. One hundred percent. You know, after a while, this will die down, and then you know you'll have people put. I again, I am not a chain agnostic person, so like I feel. Whatever chain works for you. You are chain agnostic. Sorry, I am chain agnostic. <laughs> Betty's like, like I will, I'm a maxi I, now. I'm not a maxi. I'm exactly. only buying Ordinals. I'm chain, I'm chain agnostic. If I can't buy I, art in a spreadsheet, yeah. I don't want it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, spreadsheets. No. But I, I want to see one of these original spreadsheets because I'm, I, uh, I don't. You should see. I have do things, you have okay. them? No, I have things from ICO. Do you days, have them? From two, I have a few. I have, th- I have things from like 2015, right? Oh, I want to see it. You should see them. It's like. We're going to put them in museum They're like, it's like this. Ready? It's like, we came out with a coin. Like you think coin, this is the funny thing, right? They think coin, like meme coins are like, oh man, all these pump and dumps now. This holds nothing, <laughs> nothing on what happened in the ICO days. It would be like, hey guys, look at EOS. I just got, an, I, I just got this guy. He's launching a coin. It wasn't like, they didn't call meme coins, just called them coins. <laughs> and um, it's called, you know, um, it's called like a, like a number go up coin. Yeah. Or bar. No, it, it didn't so- have crazy names. Back then it was like LTV. Oh, and where yeah, are they telling forever. you about it was like, this? What? Where are they telling? Like in a group chat? It was all signal. It was in, <laughs> not even signal. It was back no, it was then. It was all like Telegram. It was not. It was, no, it was just Skype. Telegram. It was like what's Skype. the thing that Microsoft bought? Skype. Skype. No, the thing that's Can kind. You speak. The, the thing. The thing that's kind that. of like Discord, but uh, professionals use it. I mean, it's not Teams. It's pretty it's Teams. It's hold I'm pretty on, sure hold it's on. Skype. Slack. 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 Microsoft owns Slack. Slack. I don't think Microsoft owns Slack. They they own some. Yeah, I think they do. Okay. But you were on Slack. Slack when it first started was all fucking degenerates. Wow. Okay. okay I'm learning something. And I right now. and then we had all these Slack rooms. Would be someone come and be like, "Yo, some guy's making a coin." And I heard it was always this. I heard <laughs> that it was the guys from Binance that are backing because back then, if you got a Binance, it would explode. Yep. And yep. you right now, people things go up like twenty thousand. It's like a two thousand percent. They went back up like. It would be like, okay, it started at a penny. It was like at $20. It went up like 500,000%. Yep. And then and, and then it would go down Near like impossible 499%, to sell it. 1,000%, and you would lose all your money. But back in those days, like those spreadsheets were crazy. It would be like, what do you want? Like now- 10% of the allocation. It was, it was like, you know, I'll take five BTC worth. Like I'll take 10 BTC worth. I'll, it, wasn't, it wasn't even Ether. It was how much you were spending in BTC. Wow. So it was even crazier because it wasn't like, yep. it was like you were just it was throwing fictional money on top of it fictional was really money. Fu- it was really like playing with like fake money. You didn't even think about it. Like, like yeah, wow. yeah. Like, I'll, I'll buy that. Like there was a coin called Wager. That was like <laughs> That's a, a, good a gamble coin. It's a good ticker. And I remember I got That's... in early and somebody sent me the spreadsheet and I was like, how much do you want? I was like, I don't know. What 10 are you going to Why not? Whatever it was. And then I all got all this wager and then lost my wager wallet and they couldn't help me get it. It was gone. <laughs> It was it was it was a wild wild west back then. Uh, the like other day, me. you were talking about um, you know tickers that do exactly what they say. The tickers, yeah. go, the and thesis. Wager is, the... is a is a good. It's one yeah. that you actually did exactly what they said. You wagered 
at all. And I, but those guys made mo- oh man, some of those guys made a lot of money back then. Enough like they'll the never white, work again. And they had white papers, and you read the white papers, and you're like, yo, this white paper looks yeah, really you would familiar. Yeah, really spend time on it. And <laughs> to the, the last copy white paper, <laughs> and then now I realize looking back, I, I don't know see who I was talking to. He said to me, "By the way, I wrote like 90 percent of those white did, papers." Did you see uh, BitCon on Netflix? It like just no. I was no. actually we're watching Sopranos watch right now, so when we're done, it's top of the list. I it, almost watched what's it the night when you were gone. But BitCon. So it's about, do you remember the token Centra? It was yeah, like, yeah. Yes. it was supposed to be a credit card payment. Yeah. Well, they literally, you remember 10X, which was also a credit card payment? The Centra white paper, they took the 10X white paper and just replaced any instance of 10X with Centra. And then just, that was their white bullish. paper. And then they just raised a bullish. They, they made like 30 something million. Is this the actor from Hollywood who like hates Bitcoin make it? There's no, like some weird. No, act. no, no. It's no. a documentary, they, right? They yeah. interviewed the guy. Like so one of the guys on the team just like ratted everyone out, and he didn't go to jail. Like the one of the guys is like in jail for a few years. Like the the other guy just had to forfeit some money. But like, he literally is talking, and he like says on camera, like I was born to be a criminal. Like my my grandpa's in the mob. Like I just knew early on that like all I had cared- to do something. All I cared about was money, and they were running these like exotic car rentals in Miami, and it was they were burning money. And then they're like, "Why don't we just make a fucking thing?" And then they it, like it was it was it was really people don't realize how crazy it is. I always spoken about some it's worth watching. Before, just like it's yeah. for fun. what's it called? Bitcoin. Bitcoin. I gotta watch it. But it was really it was crazy back then. And it I was, felt like it was everything nuts. was like that. Like they had an idea with no actual foundation in Nothing. reality. And they were just like, like again, meme coins now like they have no purpose. Then they they had less than no purpose, and it, because well, the purpose was to get money to try to make it happen. And yeah. while you were trying to make it happen, you were just paying all your friends and yourself so absorbent in amounts. I mean, of money. this is the Insane. PFPs as well, right? Like you can yeah, apply even less that. Money, though. I'll it tell was you like right. I'll tell you, you can apply that yeah. statement across like many. Yes, cycles. And no, because the only thing at least with a yeah. PFP is like I you get a thing. I got a thing. Yeah. I got to something. remind me I'm an idiot. Like I got yeah. art. I got I, I I'm not saying it's worth it and whatever, but the thing with the, the ICO days, it was like these companies and these ideas. Well, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take the blockchain, I'm gonna like go all to the, the medical the, industry. Yes, that, I, gonna, I got I, it on one or, like oh, that. Oh, I got one. Uh, I'm We're gonna a file I'm, system. I'm gonna for file the medical. system. Everybody was a file system. Everybody was working with the government. Oh, by the way, we have a government, uh, government thing coming. In. By the <laughs> way, like, Google might invest in us. Like it was all <laughs> nonsense. They're like, We're partnered with Google, and it's like they're using a Google doc to write Correct. the white paper. That's what like, it was. Like that's how their partnership. With. And it, it was it was so crazy because the amount of money that just like went back and forth it was wild it was wild it was really well i thought it was gonna last forever too because i wasn't buying the tokens um in spreadsheets i was buying them on binance yep and i was just trying to get like a 5x like i I didn't need a 5000 x like just just another 5x and that's mm. that's how I started too. I started, had a spreadsheet of like this is and you had like no money in your bank account really like you had no business even doing that but you were like you know it seems fun like i mean there's a the medical industry is really big and like yep when i went to the doctor last time they didn't have any of my information from the doctor back home and like well i didn't really think i think the vote i think the voting this is genius the vote the vote all were in the same coins it was it's but the vote the voting system should be on the blockchain that would be really smart if they could do that because then they can never cheat well yeah then we wouldn't have people who aren't citizens voting or you are you can have double votes or people who are dead or yeah, you know, yeah like dead. at least dead. like you can count them the right way. And I know I think actually if there's a will there's a way. Yeah. I would just be buying wallets. <laughs> Sibling the election. Yeah, like you know, you go No, but you could do it so you could do it each- private through a chat. You know what this is boring. It would have to be a soul bound <laughs> token. <laughs> Soul so bound let's, let's talk about something Maria's Let's go back in. to art <laughs> yeah. like let's Mar- go back to the yeah. big artists coming into the space because I feel like um there have been some good crossovers. Like my favorite has been James Jean's fragments. James Jean crossed it, um, yeah. I very ignorantly did not know who James Jean was until he did the fragments drop. And Latasha called, or not called, she sent me a Twitter DM and was like, hey, on Monday, do you want to host a space to James Jean? I like, type in James Jean. I'm like, oh, holy shit. Like text her back. Yes, of course. And then I'm like, okay, four, six hours later of just watching James Pure Jean. Pure research. Because I was like, okay, this guy's a million followers on Instagram. He's been doing this for like 20 years. Like, 
I need to do research on who he was. So since then, it's he's. Um, I don't know if you know what happened with fragments, but they basically printed all of them. And after they printed them, they realized they printed the the wrong batch of fragments. Like <laughs> like imagine you print basically ten thousand things. It's not the final and then you realize the print run you did was like the test generation. Yep, oh and it God. wasn't the final. So like none of the things matched. Yep. So they had to reprint them. It took like two years, but they stuck through it and i got the prints last week after oh i saw your yeah, yeah, yeah. like looks amazing and there was a point during it where it's like you didn't ever feel like they were gonna rug you like they're very open and honest like right, they, right they sent an email last year and it was like hey we did all the prints bad news they're wrong right um so we're gonna redo them but, I, don't think, I don't think it's ignorant that you didn't know who he is i actually think that there's something to say about the fact that if we bring these artists from outside our community, I, so our community the, the, it teaches us. The one thing I wanted to point out is I've been an avid collector of his since. Like, I've yeah. bought, like, six right. of his prints. Yeah. I got a statue. I have his Instagram on alerts. Like, he's, like, one of my favorite artists. And, and can it really open up a whole new audience for these people? Yeah. Yes. Like, it was, you know, I didn't, I'm not a comic book guy. And that's where he started. Like, yeah. he was... Yeah. You know, one of the more prolific comic book artists of his generation in the mid 2000s coming up into the 2010s. But he does so much other stuff that isn't comic books, like massive paintings, yep. massive glass sculptures. Like he's a very skilled multidisciplinary. Raph Grissetti was a lot like that, right? Like to me, I was like, I knew who Raph Grissetti was. He's like, from God of War. Yeah. yeah he's a legend, yeah. you know? Same here. And then also they started doing least. NFTs. I was like, okay, well, Do I his pepes are some of my favorite. He's so, he's so, 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 he's so incredibly talented. And now he's obviously running, like I think creative at Netflix for gaming and stuff. He has a huge job there. But to me, when I saw Raph Grissetti doing NFTs, I was just like, Holy shit. Like I follow that guy on Instagram like the same way, like James Jean. Like I always liked James Jean stuff also. But like to me, those guys come in. I don't even think it's even more like, yes, they're getting more people they couldn't reach, but they're, they're like the nice thing is they're pe reaching people they could directly connect to. And I think there's like a lot of good there's a lot of, there's like from what I understand, there's two different types. There's different types of marketing, but they real direct marketing when you could have that like kind of one on one or you more money is spent onto the onto the oh for sure like right? me hosting that space and yeah. getting to ask him you know 90 minutes of questions about why he does what he does what right. inspires him like his favorite artists and that stuff like made me so much closer to him 100%. and i'm very lucky that i'm in a spot where like anyone would ask me to host that space yeah. like, well that's like the real like like this space gets curation so confused mm. and like that's actually what curation is it's like it's not about like putting things on a wall that sell it's like about like the work that's done in the research side and asking an artist who's been around for you know as long as he has a question that he's never been asked like that for me that's been one of the coolest things that's ever happened to me is like when it's a career artist that you ask them a question and yeah. they go you can see it in their face they're like <laughs> oh, oh i've never oh, been asked i need that. to think of that you know and like that yeah. that's really like a proud moment for me when that happens because I, it's like like you know they've gone through let's say twenty five years and they've never been asked something that like peaked that part of well, their brain. Well, I also think it's about creating accessibility to those artists that most people felt they didn't have before. Mm -hmm. You know, I think with this space, it's like you feel like the people who are releasing things, you can DM them, you can message them, you can be on their Discord and chat with them about something. Whereas in the traditional art world, it's like. I'm not in New York. I can't go to that gallery to show. I can't access them the way I can yes, access them agreed. in Web3. You can't like DM them and say that. Now, talking about curation, um, we're going to tell us like, I because I, I just want to go back to it. The the event at Basel um, with uh, the Gateway, I mean, that room was gorgeous. Right? Thank you. What goes through the process? Because you've done a bunch of these now and you deal with the artist, but that curation process of putting it together, I mean, I'll actually, you know what, I'll compare Basel to Korea because okay. we also did Gateway Korea three months before. And Korea didn't have an overarching theme for the mm. artwork. We really wanted to make sure NFT Now and our whole team working on it, which is a small team, wanted to make sure that we were highlighting artists who were based in Asia, who were based in South Korea, but also bring artists who'd never have an opportunity to show work in South Korea their work there as well. And so really the whole basis of curating that show is like, hey, what work do you, do, represents you as an artist? And that's what we showed at Gateway Korea. Whereas in Miami, we 
the NFT Now team gave it a theme of blossoming. And so we gave each artist, hey, the theme is blossoming. This is what that means to us. It's mm-hmm. about, you know, how coming out of crypto winter, blossoming mm. into our spring. Yes. What does that mean to you? And so that was kind of the curatorial note that we gave every artist. Did every artist adhere to that? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. And there was a couple instances where we'd get an artwork and be like, oh, hey, like mm. How reminding this? you of what the theme is. Like, do you want to maybe rethink like what you're submitting for red this? Or... Skull. <laughs> <laughs> or... Will every garden die? And, and it's so interesting because 99% of artists who we had that conversation with were like, oh my God, thank you so much for mentioning that here's another few options um so it it really was a super open dialogue i think nft now's relationships with a lot of the artists that we were showcasing was strong enough for people to be for there to be a dialogue Mm -hmm. about what work you're showcasing and i think that really stood out when you walked around and saw the work plus a lot of it was christie's for their december sale so christie's had a lot to do with you know which artists were shout out to nicole Oh, I'm Nicole, team Sebastian. love her, Sebastian, yeah. Lydia, all Lydia, of them, they're yeah. so great. So they really did a lot of that curation as well. Sebastian did an incredible job of that. Um, but I think it it's what made it stand out. And yeah. obviously like the space we gave to those artists, the screens, et cetera. And I think what you can take away from that is a lot of people who are putting on digital art shows are not having those conversations with artists. Uh, they're just like, hey, here's a form, submit your work. Period. Right. And I, I know, think I know, so like, much can be done. And there works on a poll. Yeah. yeah. Like you ask questions like that most people don't like, you know. Hey, our screens are 16 it's, by 9, yeah, vertical or horizontal. Yes. If you don't want yes. bars. Yes. Do you not want bars? This is the ratio. It's what it's going to look like. Be prepared. And it's I very think, clean too. It's yeah. like yeah. each piece yeah, has yeah. enough space. It's yeah. not cluttered together. It's at the right yeah. height, you know, like 59 inches to the middle of the screen. I wish everyone would know that. <laughs> like <laughs> you what? know. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I feel like a lot of the stuff that gets displayed, especially digitally, is just... It's an afterthought. You you look at it and you're like, why? This should have just been printed. Or like, this should be physical. You know, I also Sometimes think... Sometimes it should be just printed. I agree. Yeah, 100%. I agree. Um, I think, too, like, I was talking to someone about this recently. There's not really, like, you have to do it out of passion right now. Like, there's not, like, a paid role, like, in the traditional art world where... You know, being an advisor, which is for a buy side, it's not for artists typically. Um, so you advise on like, you know, Benny says, I have this budget. I like I want something like this for my office. And then the advisor advises, uh, you know, on the other side of that, the curatory side, again, there's no one on that side that's getting paid. So it's a passion project. So I think what comes in that is like it's people's spare time. It's people who don't really know what they're doing. Uh, it's also I wouldn't even think that someone as traditional art gallery background would do like what how how maria like portrays some of this and so it, it's really interesting to me to think about how that might change in the future you yeah, know I, it's I like it, what happens when you pay someone who that's their dedicated role yeah and that's this that's i mean to be fair that's why you're able to do a good job because yes. you're not doing it for free no you're able i mean to i dedicated the last months. six months yeah, six of my months, life to like, gateway korea and gateway miami and like but still loved doing it. It wasn't course, like just doing they're it. Not, they're not mutually exclusive, but Absolutely. you have to it be It doesn't able... feel like client work in the sense no, where you're like, oh, like, I just got to get this to the finish line. Right. Not get my I think we're getting better. I think like there's going to be better screens and better way to... to every big art. event yeah. levels up, I yeah. think. And like yeah. every big event, you learn something. Like there was stuff that we learned in Korea that I was like, okay, we, we're going to make sure we're not going to do this. Like looping videos for displaying digital art as a video Very is difficult. like I've been trying to find the solve for two years. It's like not just a USB that does not create a loop right, file. It, it like pauses for a second it, and puts. The and it's p- like you can't. I can't. It like mm. it breaks my soul if mm. there's a lag. And, and it, yeah. so it's, it's like figuring that especially out. Especially if like an artist has a yeah. perfect loop. Yep. But then Ugh. the last second doesn't seamlessly shift into the first second. Uh, it's like I will die on it. that hill. <laughs> yeah. I've. You got to have like a, just, can you make me like a five day video looping? Like, what, what is your favorite display? Like, I, I'm assuming you've worked, I, I don't have any, um, like physical digital art displays. Like what's your favorite that you've Black worked Black Dove, which okay. we did Amani's um, event last December. Oh yeah, it was so um, amazing. For her nonprofit, we did at the 
Oh my God. What was the name of that place in LA, Benny? Black Escaping me. Oh my goodness. I feel so bad that I can't remember. I mean, but I, they have I, all black I, I know, screens. I know the, I and bought some of the What's so art incredible is it was really amazing. Experience. You can program it all from your yeah. phone, right? So okay. it's like we used LG screens, which were amazing for the gateway. Like, phenomenal beautiful the work looks great but there's a process to be able to get that artwork on the screen get it to seamlessly loop get it yep. to fit the dimensions of the yes. screen black dove it's all on your phone yeah you have like all the files and you're just like clicking changing they're incredible they, they, they that that was actually a really now that you say it, it was a super nice experience yeah like, yeah I've been very the shocking thing about cautious. black doves though they're eighty like 70 80 pounds they're yeah. so heavy they're yeah, very heavy they're has very a hard to mount in it. Yeah. They're very expensive. Yeah, yes. very expensive. But well, I think that that all of that accessibility will I think change. change. Display I think tech always gets cheaper. I think too, yeah. like atomic forms are amazing. They're so great to use. There's a little bit of a learning curve when you're loading content onto them, but they're small. Yeah. So when you're doing these big events, you want like, how do you get the marriage of like an LG size screen with the you want a 55 or a 65? Yeah. Well, that's it's not just about the event, right? Like, I think there's also something to say that we need to find a way. For people who are not native digitally to buy this art and have some kind of physical that goes with it, if it's a digital physical or not a digital physical of some sort, because more and more collectors that I speak to are not in our space. They're like, they can't wrap their heads around yet of just owning something. Digitally. A token. It's like, it's right. too hard for them. And, I'm, and, and by the way, I totally understand that. And I don't think you're always going to get people now, maybe down the road. 20 years from now, 30 years from now, 40 years, 50, whatever it is. Yes, maybe we'll get to that point. I hope sooner. But in the meantime, <laughs> if there's years. a way that we could create a technology where you have the physical that connects to your token as well. You know, I, I think there's something. I mean, listen, I know Infinite Objects is basically trying to build that right now or is building that, has built that. But like, I think there's something nice that we have to find a way to entice these other people. That's why I think sometimes not putting screens up, but actually just doing really beautiful, amazing prints is Can, okay. Yeah, I absolutely. Yeah. I do well, think, I think too, it's sometimes there's a cost thing, right? Like agreed, you buy yeah. a, something for a little bit, for a lot less than one thing. It's like, how well, can you give that person a physical? It doesn't have, like, that's you where have great, I, thoughts you get on really this. confused in, in the aspect where artists think that they have to give someone something because they already purchased something. Like if you purchased, like I'll use the recent calf drop on exchange, for instance, yeah. like the same thing. She, she, she's doing the same exact thing she did with this one as she did with her ETH yes. edition, where a few months down the line, you can actually, if you own that edition, go to her print store and buy exclusively if you own that edition. Oh, and Dave did that with Drip Drop. Yes, Same thing. Yes. So, yeah. And they're very high quality. Yes, the prints are still pricey because you're not getting a, a trashy little poster. You no. know, like, yeah, And that's no, the it's... thing, is if you're giving someone a free edition, or like a, or a free print with an edition of, that costs you like $200, you don't have the price base, the cost basis to give them quality. No. So, like, I think all that matters. Now, do I think that, like, I don't think that necessarily all artists need to over-index towards physicals. I think that largely, like, if you look at, you know, that generation, you're right. Like, they don't get it fully. But if you help them get it, like, I think that there's ways. Yeah, like, no, I, I, we agreed. sold art to interior decorators when we went up to the Hamptons. Uh, this woman, she ended up purchasing this. We had the option where she could buy the screen with it. Because like right. that was the best way. Like right. we baked in the cost separately, and then so the the NFT sale happened. It was two separate transactions. I think transactions. more things are going to start to happen so, like that, and it makes yeah. a lot of sense. Be and then you kind of you kind of start to walk them through it. Now yeah, like, Jesse Wilson sells like that. Sometimes. Yeah, the art box yeah. artist. And, and where you get yeah. into like an, another confusing layer then is like, um, you know, how do you then differentiate? Like, what's the NFT? What's not the NFT? And then trading secondary with, when it comes to physicals. Uh, that's where I think the next thing's gonna come into play because there has to be like, and that's like anti crypto, quote unquote, because you, to do something where you traded physicals, there would have to be some kind of escrow. Yeah, I, right? I, like I, you would have to give me funds. I would have to take your funds. When you receive, when you verified receiving the physical, then you would have to scan it to the, release the funds to the and, next and then, person. I know Transient's working on some things like with like chips and connecting. Yeah, it, but they lock, you know. they lock people into like their. Like that's the issue with a lot of crypto Correct. things is they lock people into their contracts or their. Right. So it's not totally decentralized. Right. But I, well, listen, and it's I, not like, operable. But like, I think like, look, you know, I say this all the time. My my daughter rather have Roblox Roblox clothing, sometimes in her own clothing. Yeah. 
And so therefore there's going to be a time when digitally native people will understand that, at, that digital assets are just as important to them as a physical asset. But I just feel like in the meantime, as we move forward, I do think there's going to be other things like you just did, like buy the art with the screen. Yeah, and, I like that. You yeah. know, and and I, I think it's going to connect on some kind of QR code on those, on some kind of smart contract. All of those things to me make sense that you know we'll we'll do for now. You know, and I, I don't necessarily think it always has to fall on the artist. Like right now in this space, like all of the innovation is done by artists, and that's sick. I love that personally. Like that's what drives Agreed. so much of it. But like some like people need to solve problems that don't exist yet, and that can't always be the artist. Agreed. You know what I mean? If if Maria, if Keegan came home with a a, a giant painting, eight feet by eight feet, I know right where I want to put it of him as a minute, as him, you know, bare chested as a minotaur. Okay, hot. From, from, where would you put it up Paul in the house? Fabio um, style hair. Where would I put it in the Stereo. house? Yeah. Above so, your bed. Above your bed, or like, would we're you put actually, it this is perfect. in the dining room. This question is perfect timing because we, we have a debate going on about this right now. I, yeah. I didn't know this. <laughs> Seven thousand prints. I'm sure as we you have do. so many things we've collected. Yes. Okay. All sitting in the office waiting to be framed right now. And they're not even framed. I want to do a gallery wall, and Keegan is really anti-gallery wall. When you say he, gallery, a gallery wall, wall, do you, you mean like a like, collage? He, like yeah, it's like a collage, an assortment of different framed artworks Why don't you on want to one do big wall on the stairway. Because it's not thinks, symmetrical and aesthetic. Well, he just thinks that each artwork should live, you know, somewhere, somewhere. So like for the a minute, season, we can rotate it. Like he wants to do rotating, oh, which like mm. okay, and I, I see his You'll do it for like two seasons. And but the minotaur, yeah, yeah, we're done with it. It's going to the attic now to be archived. Like the, that's what they do in museums, by the way. The <laughs> minotaur <laughs> version of you could be seasonal. <laughs> Is that a winter? Or Unless a it goes over your bed. Ah, uh, yeah. Like still maybe going. in the bedroom. <laughs> so I, I feel above the bed. We've had the <laughs> same exact ceiling. conversation, me and Jess, about between collage or gallery wall, and yeah. every piece has its spot. Yeah. And if you're looking at it, you're not looking at three other pieces or four other That's pieces how I around feel. it. And we've kind of landed on like, well, there's one room that has a bunch of killer acid art. And it is more of a collage wall. But right. then like in our living room and in my office, it's, you know, not a collage wall. It's right. very much like, oh, this is here. You got like the there. foot in between at least yeah. to have some um, breathing. And like. it's tough because I want to show more. Like Same. You, if you wanted to just maximize how much art you could show, you would clearly just do the whole house in a gallery wall. But then if you take yourself out of your own shoes and you walk in your own home and just everything's a gallery. It's like chaotic. It's like, yeah, yeah. there's a lot to look it's at. It's how I feel walking into NFT events. It's like overstimulating <laughs> almost. So like, it's, it's trying to find the balance. I, I am a, like a quite like organized chaos person. But when I walk into it, like an event where there's so much to see at once, I, I have a hard time at first. Like I have to do like multiple loops in order to like my brain to like register things. What, what NFT event comes to mind that you think you've been the most, uh, like, you know, overwhelmed head move inside. NFTC. Of the NFTC. Yeah. <laughs> eight, eight no. Theaters. A little overwhelming. No, because the art wasn't like mum mumbled it, together. It wasn't in your All face. In Fair enough. Very valid. Like you had to do an exploration of that. I thought, I thought the Tell last, I thought that Tezos one too? in Miami was pretty chaotic. Which one? The one with the pole. The one with the pole. Oh it was God. pretty chaotic. I'm not going to lie. Like you forget the pole. For it me. was weird. Like having a walk yeah. in the back in that room. And yeah. Then, it, but it I, was a lot. It was a lot like going I on. I think to be learned mm. here is all of these events need to hire a producer who can see those problems uh, before people are. Well, yes. the thing is, a lot of these people like, like Maria. And no. I always say, as a, with a background in video production, it is hard to do event production because everyone is walking into your V1 with video production, with art production, with anything. People are seeing the final product you want them to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With yeah. events, it's you don't like get a dry run. You're opening those doors, whether the wires are showing or not. Oh, we should point. start the, the tradition of weddings. To bring it back to weddings, we should start rehearsal dinners for NFT events. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's funny though because I don't I don't know if they're even ever. Always well, I want to ask like when I went to NFT London. Oh. Okay, yeah. And I took the picture of, heard I the picked, I picked, Did the X copy. I took but that picture, was my X copy. At so the time. I took a picture of that X well, copy. My nine hundred thousand yeah, dollar X copy. I took a picture of that X copy and just I, wait on the floor. I, I actually I actually texted it to Deez. I was like, yo, look where they put your X copy. <laughs> Horizontal and screen. And then he shared it in other rooms and then other people started sharing on Twitter. And I spoke to NFT it turns out NFT NYC, by the way, 
runs NFT London. Of yes, duh. NFTC, uh, NFT NYC. Do they trademark NFT. NFT, <laughs> no, their trademark is NFT NYC, I believe. Um, they're probably the worst organization. So two months from now, when this comes out, and you know, and we're people at are, NFT NYC. When, when I'm there doing a table, <laughs> yeah, when we're there and whatever. But like, you know, I remember like I got a like a, like you know like I said this is in your space and they wrote they wrote no this wasn't there I was like. <laughs> The fuck what do you mean I, just, I was there? They just make it up with AI? Like, I couldn't even do that back then. And, and you know, back then, the you thought now. process was like, not that didn't upset me. It's funny. Like, those screens with the X copy, like, I just thought it was funny when I sent it to these. The thing that upset me was that they, ha I, I flew in because I went to see the, um, I literally flew in for a day. I went to that and, and OSF's thing. And I went to really see um, a lot of money. They had an exhibit for him. Yep. And, I was there and I'm just like, how do you have disrespect for an artist who obviously had passed away and you're giving him all this, you know, like this whole thing and like you got wires on the floor with fucking And I just tape? don't think like, they, what's wrong with you? They don't think it's no, disrespectful. Think it's yeah, it's like don't. we have to create the standard yeah. and I think not? that's what we've done at Gateway for the last several gateways is like create a standard of how digital art should be displayed over and over again until everyone starts doing it properly. And that yeah. doesn't mean you have to do it the way it was done at the gateway. Just do it in a way where you would feel comfortable standing next to the artist and being like, look how he displayed your work. Yeah, but to That's bring it like, back to the regular art world, you go to some of these art events and you're like, whoa, like this is just like random pieces of newspaper that you painted on <laughs> glued fair, to the fair wall. Fair enough, but that at least is the art, right? That's the, the art. way they display it at least has some, you know, semblance of like sometimes it's art, paper mache. Right? Like, you know, if you go if you walk around like, you know, Basel or or any of these other types of events, there's 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 a cohesiveness to things that we might not really realize because the art looks sometimes. crazy. I think we're still mm -hmm. giving traditional curators because it exists in the same way in the traditional world where like People, they, there's amateurs everywhere. You of know course, what I mean? like, yeah, yeah. Like, like, oh my god, we're gonna do our first Basel show, and it's right. like a one single projector, uh, <laughs> S Bon projector. You know, like I mean, switching first... between like art that you can barely see in high contrast because it's daytime. The you know, first like... gallery show I ever did was with Street Dreams, and mm. we literally taped with like rolled duct tape, no tape way. prints onto a wall. Yeah, wow. and but it, it looked like, clean. It, it did look clean, but like. That's Looking what happens. Back, By like, the way, oh you man, could see that. Never you could see that. You could see that's kind of the look. It's like street. It was in a loft space, so uh, like yeah, but it, like in the, it looked fine. But like now, as a true I'm artist, like, oh. you can spin anything. Like, yeah, exactly. You know, like if it Bana looks bad, banana, you're like, a banana. Exactly. The banana. Never well, forget. You could always pass the other thing. The thing I'm most bearish on when it comes to uh, digital art is that you can't vandalize it the same way. <laughs> You know, like there's been a lot of like traditional art, like, you know, the eco protesters and stuff, like throwing like beans on the pink mm. things. It's like, what is the digital art version of like eco terrorist vandalism? Like it's painting like on their terraform. Discord yeah. hacking. Yeah, yeah. Terraform. You should say Discord hacking. <laughs> no, I don't know. That's terraform question. painting. Yeah, you got to shoot something to the antenna, like hack the antenna mainframe or something. No, like, it's. I mean, the vandalism that happens in protests too, it's like the, the pieces are protected a lot of the time. Yeah, the it's like they're not really... Weird, yeah. Or they're not even like the real piece. Like, it's like, yeah. you, you, good job. You just threw it on the fake Mona Lisa. Like, congrats. Like, Wait, the it. Mona Lisa's fake? Uh, no, they, that one's not. But like, but they do have examples of where the main art is not out in public. Cause what? Because the light hurts it too much. You're kidding me. So wait, the thing like that we see is just a fake pic of Sometimes. painting of the real painting? Well, no. and that goes back to... National yeah. Treasure. Wait, you wait, know, wait, sometimes in, that, in museums, like this oh, happens, yeah. like in real life. In yeah. real life, you've never seen National Treasure. I thought that was just a movie, guys. Yeah, yeah. Every movie is based on real life. Is you that know, true? Like the <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everything like, true. Everything on the internet is true. That's fucked up, dude. These you never told me. This. Well, uh, this is actually a fascinating <laughs> one too. Thought you knew. Um, sometimes the artwork is not even the artwork. What do you mean? Sometimes it's the instructions on the artwork is actually the artwork. Oh, wait, what's what? that clock? Is there like a famous clock in the yes. square? Maybe. No, that's the doomsday clock. That's that is also famous. Oh, you mean like they give you the instructions? The instructions. To yes, that I understand. Yeah. There's a famous artist in the 80s who did that yes. with candy. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, his name is, uh, it's going to escape me, Samantha. The candy on the floor. Yeah. The instructions like, yeah, yeah. Eat the oh, candy. She, Samantha talked about it. On the, we brought it up. Yeah. I, I, I There's a few artists who are like this. Where, Very cool stuff, though. That's where that, the that's... instructions and same thing like the descriptions. Yeah. And this is where like, it goes deep into curation. That? Huh? <laughs> How does someone collect that? So you that's, can collect it. You literally collect the instructions. Yeah. 
to recreate that piece yourself. It's very so generative you, in a lot you of ways. It is. It, it was the origins, because this is where I learned about it first when I was writing an article about generative art and like how it started with systems that were designed yeah. um, IRL. So like you write your own system, be like, take three steps. It's like a cheat code, you know, up, up, down, up, down. Up, down, <laughs> left, right. <laughs> exactly. A, so that like essentially rapper. is human generative because you're doing the same algorithmic motion okay. repeatedly. Uh, and that's how it started. So I, and in many ways, like that's always been something that fascinates me with the art world. It's like, what's the art? Is it the instructions on how that art was created? Or so that's why like these NFT questions that get posed so often are are really interesting to me because it's like we're just asking the same questions in a different context now. Yeah, Felix Gonzalez. Felix Gonzalez. Yes, that's yeah. it. He he did some incredible stuff. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. I really do like that. So talking about instructions, Pac. <laughs> no, I was gonna go back <laughs> to the relationship. So I'm not my poet. Ever. But you want you, instructions? I got some. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you um, you're just married, mm-hmm. and it was like I said, a beautiful wedding. Last time you'll ever put your foot down. Yeah, that was the best line. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now that you guys are married and you're starting this new uh, chapter in your life, what's uh, what what what's next for you guys? Like, what do you what do you see coming? Like, you know, what do you, what do you? What do you see in this beautiful relationship with the two of you in the next 10 years? Getting off of Staten Island. Oh my gosh, in 10 years? I was like, we're going to go on our honeymoon in two months? <laughs> I, I, I thought you were going to bring that up. I said 10 years. But I know you're going on your third, fourth honeymoon? Something we're going to go like on that. our second honeymoon. Second fourth. honeymoon, okay. <laughs> That's how it feels. In sometimes. a couple months. Okay. Uh, we're going to go to Tokyo. Oh, nice. She switched. She's, we were going to go That's your favorite place, though, right? Yeah, yeah. we were going to go I was to... not mad about it. Uh, we were going to go to Italy, and she's like, how would you feel about Japan? And I was like, no, no, no opinion. No opinion. <laughs> like, really, really cool. Um, yeah, we're going to go on our second honeymoon in a couple months. Wow. And we'll see where it goes after that. Yeah. What happens stay with together? Tilly on the honeymoon? Does yeah, she that's stay a with your family? Okay, so grandma. She, my mom and dad have a dog. And in the beginning, I, me and my dad were like, no, the dogs don't get along. They didn't, I would have someone come watch her. And my mom and Keegan were like in cahoots to get the dogs to meet and get along, yes. which is amazing. So now anytime we go anywhere, Tilly so it's such a cheat code. Yeah, it's the best. And like, she's so much happier over there because she's getting constant snacks. All and so like, like, God willing, we have the child eventually. Oh, then you can for also. Sure Same vibes. We're not leaving Staten Island as for long at as least next time. There. Also, <laughs> she made it sound like it's a prison sentence. We like have our home. We have a pool. Like, yeah, but it's we're in New York. It's amazing. You know, yeah, it's, it's a, a beautiful landfill, house. Like Benny said. When you have, True. if you have a boy, will you want him to have long hair like Keegan? Uh, yeah. My mom actually jokes about that a lot too, because she's like, "Oh, Keegan and Maria, because they're Italian, gonna, they're never controlling. Never gonna cut their kids' hair." <laughs> See, for me, I, I, I'm gonna say, "How do you want your hair?" Because so I'm, what's the, I'm, I'm a what's big the origin in. of the long hair for you? Did you just were you a kid who just liked long hair? Is that it? Yeah, I think so. I, <laughs> I mean, I was a skateboarder kid, and maybe I just felt like. I had to do it or something. I don't know. I've had long hair since fifth grade. I like just wow. got bored with it. Once my mom stopped cutting my hair into like a preppy thing, I was just like, maybe it was an act of early rebellion. Uh, I feel can like that just, was around the time. Like, can you look straight at that camera? You know what I want you to do? I want you to put like a bald head on him to see what it would look like. <laughs> Here, move over just a second. Just look a stare bald at head. Just like swap yeah, yeah, our yeah. heads. Swap, swap our heads. Can you do that? Try. Okay, just look like this. This, this is what I would look like if I had Keegan's hair, and this is what <laughs> Keegan would look like if he had my bald head. I want you to Photoshop that. I can see okay? Keegan okay. with the beard. I feel like yeah, next, you can, you can next, beard. if he I were to go, long beard. if I were to go anything but long hair, I think I would go full bald. Just I had to go one or the other. How like, long have you had gauges for? Since fifth grade, sixth grade science class. Fifth grade. What? Science. Did you stretch them yourself? Um, I. <laughs> So I've always been an interesting kid. Yeah, clearly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I, there was, we had this kooky science teacher. Actually, it was fifth grade. Fifth grade. Uh, we had this kooky science teacher at classic Florida, like, again, just like quintessential, this woman's a science teacher or an art teacher, you know? And it's not getting x-rated, right? No. Okay. Not this, not this, not this, not not this teacher story. Not that was a different class. teacher fifth story. Different teacher okay. story. Okay. Um, but I, I get up, we're, we're sitting on the couch because I, Boycotted my desk. She had couches at the back of the room. She's like, I said, why am I gonna sit in the? Wait a minute. I said, why am I gonna sit? Why are there couches in your classroom? She's the kooky science teacher. Science class. Weird man, you know. It was like if you were like a good kid or whatever, you got to use it. And I said, why am I gonna sit at a desk when there's couches that don't get used back here every day? So I made the couch my desk. 
Uh, so one day I get up and I, I go and I ask the science teacher, I go, can I borrow some, some thumbtacks? And I go, she goes, sure, that one's no problem. And I go, can I use that lighter right there real quick? And for some reason she said, sure. Why would you give a fifth grader a lighter? Don't know. Florida. Um, <laughs> She's probably retired now, so she'll be fine. Uh, I, you know, I, I knew Lit. I had to disinfect it, so I. So you had already scorched, researched. Yeah, you scorched already. the end of it, and I just popped it through my ear right in front of her. Stand, I was standing in front of her desk, and I just. And she goes. She almost. I thought she was about to pass out. Like she was fully like. like well, what did you put in them after? Thumbtacks in the back was an eraser. Man, um, I'm gonna tell you right now. This is exactly why you went into Solana early, man. <laughs> this. <laughs> This is the like, yeah. I, I knew a is, kid who did it with a me. Nintendo DS stylus. He what? <laughs> what did he do? You know the metal styluses? Yeah. On the original Nintendo DS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what he used to pierce his own ear in, in middle school. That's thick. Right. I, That's yeah. very thick. I don't know where he's at now, but <laughs> in jail. Yeah. Could be in a yeah. good place. Well, yeah. I mean, look at Kia. Well, so did you like? I stretch mine slowly though. Okay, like I had I was buddies that were. I was hung out with people who were older than me. So like I had people who were like going to metal Can I shows. Stick my finger through it. Yeah, it's clean too. I've like, never just, done it. Is it? Yeah, let's do I it. Just no, he did it wash morning. his hair. You're right. Can I do it? Do yeah, it. go for it. Should I put my finger through? I won't feel it. <laughs> I don't feel anything. This there. feels very. Look at the camera. Move your head so you can <laughs> see that. You're fingering his ear. Finger your ear. You, if you want, you can smell it. It might smell like a belly button. Yeah. No. Oh, is my finger going to smell now? No, I took a shower today, so okay. we're good. Do you clean your ear holes? Yeah, you have he to. He does. Now. But I always have. Does he never ever, had an infection. Does he ever take them off? These you, were once and you like, hang on to them? like much like bigger. His, like, yeah. they were, that's like, I was going to ask, like, what size did you go up oh, to? I went to an inch. No. No. Okay. And now I'm down to five eighths of an inch. And uh, then it got uh, too big for my face. Back? Well, if you don't rip your ear. So, like, I had all these dudes, like, these gnarly Florida dudes, they all did it way quick, and they, like, ripped their ears, so they could never heal up. Like, their ears look oh, gross. So yours, so did you like, learn from their up. mistake? Exactly. I got it. Okay. I learned from their mistake. They all stretched too quickly, and, like, I was, like... Why don't you put, like, a QR code in one? I like... love internet era, too, so, like, I, I just Googled everything. Like, that was, like, none of these kids knew how to use the internet, because they were a few years older than me, <laughs> it felt like. They were all just, like, we're hardcore. Like, we just do things. Oh, my God. Do you know what you should put in there? One of those... Apple Air Tags. <laughs> so I never get lost. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds brilliant, bro. I, I, I like feel like the, we already have those. The, the, the <laughs> idea of having a QR code yeah, put a QR in code. your ear. Yeah, you can For make exchange a custom art. thing. Say, like, oh, you interested in art? I Just don't want people that right close to my face. I was thinking about like doing like random placement of the words of the seed. Do you, are you, do you have, um, I mean, I got to ask, but do you have uh Earrings other places on your body? <laughs> no, I'm not pierced anywhere else. You're not pierced anywhere else. Okay. No. Are you, Maria? No. <laughs> no. Okay. I, I mean, his ass tattoos are so shocking. As, yeah, as I mean, that's is. really what else do you need Have if you your ass is tattooed? Any tattoos since? Your shook a tattoo. Yeah, I've gotten two for since another then. DJ duo. Keegan was part of. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking about getting a tattoo. They're fun. Get but Keegan's face on your ass. See, I'm yeah. done with. Uh, after I did my last one, I switched mentalities, and that's also the time when I was like starting to get really into hanging out with artists and stuff too. So like I switched mentalities from wanting to ever choose what I put on my body. So now if I get a tattoo, it's going to be something that. Agree. Like I asked like, the face studio to, to, yeah. to Ooh, yeah. draw me a tattoo and, and have um, snuffy snuffy or it depends if it's black and white. You need snuffy, to get no color. I'll do a hand the, um, I forget the name lost in my mind, whatever the, the bubble is on your back, full back. Just, I, see, I don't want to put it on my back though because I can't you ever can't see, see it. it. I want to put it like here so I can look down and be like, yo, look Or at your that. arm. You yeah, my arm, arm is a nice place something like it. that. But also like I probably can't do it. I don't have any tattoos. Anyways, I'm scared. You have no tattoos, right? I have, I have commitment issues. I want I want a tattoo where like it doesn't hurt. Your butt. When you no, s- that's the worst pain. <laughs> worst pain. Could you not I thought sit? my finger it's was all the nerves. worst. So your finger? Fuck bitches get money. What? Yeah. She it, told her her mom that it, it meant uh, what, father, what? brother, grandma, mother. Oh. Wow. Me and my brother both got it. So when we got home, she was like, "What does that mean?" Your that's a good gets con. It too. Like yeah. your mom gets that, like, Oh, that's so right. cool. Like, that's so thoughtful. Like such a good Catholic girl you are. Like no, it was after we broke up with this first girlfriend. We got fuck bitches get money on our fingers. As you and do. it's wow. the Talk most about- painful tattoo I have for sure. Yeah. But you have many tattoos, right? Yeah, I, I see commitment issues. I never my I grew up. My dad has a lot of tattoos. My mom has a couple, so you it was like never the like a big deal. Process to me. of getting it. Yeah, and it's like just like a collection of like memories. For yeah, me. that's of like I can look down and like remember why I got it and who I got it. Right, with. where you got like it. it it's a like it's a, like that movie Memento. <laughs> <laughs> or like one of my best friends growing up, 
he now has tattoos on like almost every visible inch of his body, not his face or neck. And it's like, he was just like, yeah, I was just like vibing and walked into the shop and like, I really liked the dinosaur. So I got the dinosaur on my leg. And then like the next thing you know, he's like, he's done that 50 times. Yep. He's like, I don't really have any room. Why was I get like a else. full head tattoo? No. Our buddy's like that. Yeah. Uh, he's I, that. He used to get so many at once that he would get like infections. It he, he, your me. body goes into shock. Like yeah. he would get like five tattoos at once. And it's like, you can't do I mean, that. Is that like metal heal. going into your skin your blood like, I don't know. yeah it's like ripping off a layer well, your of body's like trying to heal the tattoo in so many places that like your immune system shuts did you see it's time um, to like get more advanced with tattoos this may be kind of weird but did you see do you know who daniel got hits is on yes on oh, i used to work with him did, did you see <laughs> that he's getting the smile on his hand removed so he's documenting him getting it removed and he's sharing like the videos of the lasering and shit. And oh it's like his thick. body just shaking it's tremendously. And like. it's thick. Like it's not like a really thin stroke. It's like mm-hmm. a fucking like, I don't know, three ace inch or like half. Yeah, you can hear it just nah, like, ugh. I don't think I regret anything enough to go through that process. Like, me either. I would just keep it on me at that point. Yeah. Like, yeah like, I decided if I ever were to like get. But shout out Daniel just like that. Dude, that's the, gnarly. I like that he's willing to admit and then share that because I think it takes a little bit of like. He is a gem of a human. Yeah. I feel like he has such an internet personality. <laughs> yes. And in real life, I mean, we haven't spoken or worked together in years but in real life he is just like the kindest sweetest loveliest human and i feel like a lot of the personas all of our friends have on the internet you're just like that's you're that's not that's your just really a jerk. <laughs> you have a mask on and you're like yeah. oh i'm this person luckily i don't know too many of those i don't know too many people who are like a different personality than they are online like i'm I, not saying different it's just like what i think general no no, no it's not a bad it's not a bad thing i either. think most web3 people i know are pretty like who they are online or yeah usually what i meet in person i think there's exceptions there's always exceptions yeah, yeah for sure it's like dave krugman's really like five two and not as good looking <laughs> but you know you know we won't tell what's been the that. biggest uh if you can say it like surprise who who wasn't like themselves like you know you thought you had this preconceived oh, notion of them and this one met- is good hmm. first time i met roger dickerman <laughs> yeah what did you think i, I he thought was? he was gonna be so short because I've only seen him on mm. voice calls, and he only <laughs> he does the worst camera angles that you are used uh. to. So you couldn't see his muscles. He, first of all, he's ripped, and <laughs> so all you yeah. saw was from here up. So I thought he was this tiny guy with big headphones. The first time I meet him, I'm like, holy shit. It was shit. Bitcoin Miami. It, it was Bitcoin the Miami. premiere party. So like, I meet him, and I'm like, dude, you're jacked, you're tall, <laughs> and you're not wearing headphones. So I was just like so confused. I was like... Okay, great it's, to meet you. That's very funny because I saw I saw I found all, him online with all, with with his with workout, workout yeah. stuff, so I knew. But it's funny. I'm in Florida. I went to um, somebody's house. Uh, oh, uh, NorCal is doing biscuits. Yes, and I was on like day seven, so I was like a mess, <laughs> you know. And um, I went, and Will says, Will Savage, like, oh, I want to introduce you to this guy, Carl. And I talked to this guy Carl for like thirty minutes. I was so, I was so I, this was the Thank morning. Thank you, ex's friend Carl. No, so okay. hold on. So I'm having this conversation with this guy Carl. I'm like, okay, I go outside. I'm totally out of it. And I said to Will, I was like, "Yo, um, can you uh, introduce me to Batsu? Because like he told me he was gonna be here, and I never met him. He's like, "Dude, you were just talking to him for a half an hour." I was like, <laughs> "Carl?" It's like, "Who's Carl?" It's like the guy I was talking to. And I went up to him. I was like, "Yo." What's your name? He's like, oh, yeah, Batsu. I just introduced myself. I was like, I thought you told me your name was Carl. I had no clue who I was talking to. <laughs> Benny just heard the wrong. So I call name. him Carl now for now on. Oh, no, By the way, that's not his real name. But no. it turns out. But what I was gonna say is, is that like online he talks about you know working out. I thought like you know like eh, how you know built is he? Be? Then I see dude, him. he's shredded. Dude, he's like shredded. And, I'm and like, he's tall. Yeah, tall, shredded, good looking guy, built. I was like, okay, now it makes sense that that's Batsu. Another yeah. one that really sticks out to me is Meltem. Because I, I, I know her internet persona. Queen so of the dick butts. Yeah, <laughs> queen of the dick butts. I, I had this persona that she was going to be such a business professional. And she is. She's a badass. Yeah, but she also knows how smart. to let loose and have fun. Yeah. And it shocked me the first time. I was like, you like, are a manager for these hedge funds, but you're also like... Just death. like me, like they're just like me for real. Like I was like, like okay, this is awesome. Like yeah, I think I think I'm pleasantly surprised. Like I think like you know, um, I think everybody I, for the most part. I don't know if I've had a disappointment. Like Keith Grossman is a lot shorter than I thought he would be. 
I mean, but he's a great guy. I want to say it's heights. I yes. think it's heights, heights in the age of yeah. Zoom. Yeah. It's like you just never know. And for me, it's always a treat whether they're tall or short based on what I perceive them to be on Zoom. Yeah, agreed. No, agreed. yeah, personality wise. I don't think, I mean, there's been some people, but they're not people I'm close with. So it doesn't right. feel like it's that right. big of a disappointment. Right. It's like, I oh. feel like we do a vibe check before we get to the spot where we meet. In yes, person, you know exactly. What I mean? like, yeah. It's like, okay, I think we go through that vibe online and then it's like, you have a pretty good but understanding. But more so like earlier on, I think during the 2021, 2022 events, um, it was a lot more of like, you know, you didn't have those long right standing relationships you didn't know like oh if i go to the all ships house like it's gonna be 40 good people i like it's right like, right right we're gonna go to like i think like the first nft now party and was that nft now in 2021 where it was proof of party and D danny was djing with yes. his, his um, mask on that was in miami was no, it was in new york, no, new york. It, was at, in new york. it was at uh the club Mid right off yeah, the bridge yeah 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 yes i blocked out that night but babies all right <laughs> it was at babies oh really but that party was like there were a bunch of people, some I had known for like a month off Twitter, and then some I had known longer, but it was like, oh, wow, this is a, it's not an all ships thing where like everybody in yeah. all ships, you can put your guard down basically and just right, be like, right. oh, I know them. People still have their personas up. Yeah. And it's just, you don't, now it's like, you know, people like uh, there's very few people who are like, I think you get to know new. people. Like I, I met, you know, like I remember I was talking, I met people like one time. <laughs> It, the first time I met him and I was really drunk and I, someone mentioned to me that he was an educator and I was like, yeah, I cannot believe that you taught in school. And he's like, yeah, I, I was never an educator. He kept saying it to me. I was like, it's okay. You don't have to be humble. And he's like, I never taught anything in my life. And then I didn't really know who he was, but then I got to know who he was. Like, right. And then I, I know who he was. He had no idea who I was. But yeah. like years later, I guess now, you know, I remember I was talking to him online a lot, like, you know, chatting. And then we, and then I hung out with him in Korea and I feel like it, I was so chaotic on Twitter, and then I was, you know, when we met and we were both so chaotic in real life, I was like, oh, this this vibe checks really easily. Yep. But it was easy because, like, you kind of, like, got to know the person. So I think, you know, there's a nice relationship to build online, especially in our community, that you get to really know people well. Like, same thing, like, I remember when I met, you know, Kath, I would make all these jokes with her, and then I met her in person. I was like, oh, I, I could vibe can make the same jokes. Yeah. Yeah. Like well, the spaces, jokes, like, we spent so much time on spaces. Right. Like, yeah. I know Goku's been on yeah. hundreds of thousands of yeah. hours of spaces, like myself. And it's just like, you feel like you know these people better, not better yeah. than your spouse, but like some of them. Well, it's hard to fake it after a while. Like, yeah. you know, like, I feel like I always had, like, I always have a bit of a guard up, like, not a guard, but like mm. a, a little bit, I guess, of like a vibe check, right? And that maybe it takes a few times. Maybe for some people it's instant. But, like, there's always a little bit of something. And, like, the thing is, like, you can only keep up a facade for so long. Like, right. It, you could come no, to a Twitter space that. for a week. Yeah, we saw <laughs> that, right? If, yeah. if, if Keegan starts a spaces and Maria's like, I'm in the mood. <laughs> yeah, in the space. What happens at that point? I would never interrupt a Goku mm. Twitter space. I just, I'm not saying you don't know. No, you before, definitely can. Before you... <laughs> Would Anytime, you, would you please, say in the please. middle? Would you say in the middle of the spaces, guys, I got to go take out the trash? Allah, you do my favorite. Gotta do the thing. dishes. Like oh, make something my phone mushrooms. died. My phone died. That's smart. So you would give up a space. Just run the space. Just to have um, relations, beautiful Always. relations, yeah. to make so, love with your wife. Absolutely. Okay, that's good. Miss By the way, absolutely. Maria, we're still in a good spot. <laughs> who is the co-host? Who doesn't matter who the co-host? It doesn't matter. Well, because if it's a good co-host, then I can just not in the space. Yes. Would you mute the space and have sex? No. no like, if it's a good co-host, oh, okay. they can do all of it. There, you there never... were times where I was hosting eight hour long spaces with my phone plugged in with two co-hosts yep. I knew could handle it. I would leave my phone upstairs because you couldn't mute it. Oh, and, I remember those days. And then I would be on like an hour of calls and just be like, well, they got it handled. Then they go back upstairs. And then go back in an hour and be like, hey. Back, guys. Yeah. Like we, we would do Where's it. Where's the weirdest places that you both have done spaces? Uh, weirdest? Not not really too many weird places for me because I always found that my phone's internet connection was so unstable when I moved around, like especially early spaces. Like if you were to do anything, the whole room would be like it would message it to everyone too. Like the host has lost connection and everyone starts freaking out. So like and I used to be serious about this. Like he's, she'd be like, he's still she'd be like, you can you can do it in the car, and I'm like, I cannot do a space in the it car. It depends on the audience. Like if uh, I would never do the James Dean thing. In right. the car, but if it's like a, a Lindy Walk or Late Lit Lindy or a you know weekly right. vibe space, like we did the vibe space the other day, and I was driving doing errands, like 
in a store, mm. but I'm also on stage. Have you either of them have either of you done a space as naked? Uh yeah, for the bathtub. Yeah. I I mean I've taken my phone in the shower on a space and kept that was it early days. That was that was kind Maria, of Maria. Have you? <laughs> I'm not a big Twitter Spaces guy. Uh, like, but I'm you're a very big naked person. But you get it. Yeah, get yes, it yes, from yes. big naked person. Like you get all the information you would need. I from well, him. I mean, like the she GM show. More... I used to like listen to the GM show from Keegan's POV because he'd be like pacing the kitchen and I'd be in the living room working. Yes. Um, but I'm not a big public speaker. Yeah, like the, this is a like, big thing for you. We got you on air. Yeah, I'm not really like. How was it so far? Kind of freaked me out. Yeah, back in the day of touring, Good. we used to like chase her with the microphone because she'd be so oh, afraid. But so this great. isn't amplified. Like I can't hear my voice coming out of giant speakers. Yeah, so right. this feels better no, this feels than a like. Little easier. It's like a when I used to give a speech at my wedding, I was like terrified. Really? Yeah, if it makes you, you feel so well. If it makes I, you feel any better, when you hmm. did uh, sound checks to empty rooms, there was no one listening. And now when you do this one. There'll be a lot of people listening. Okay. I think we have to uh, start wrapping up. It's a 4.30. 4.30. It's 4.30 now. Okay. Right. So we've actually been talking for almost two wow. and a half hours. Can you, can you believe by. it's been that long? No, I can't. So I didn't believe you when you said so it. So this is what we're going to do <laughs> first. <laughs> I am going to, I'm going to give my final thoughts on the two of you. And then uh, uh, Deez is going to ask you a question. And then we're going to, we're going to, we're going to call it a day. Right? What, are, right? what are your final thoughts? Okay. Here are my final thoughts. <laughs> He's been working on this He's the whole been, time. Yeah. Been, no, I hear it. It's made up right now. <laughs> He's been shit. No, I uh, thank you guys for coming. I think that these and I talked about wanting to have a couple on the podcast so importantly because I think it doesn't get, like I said before, it doesn't get talked about about the relationship with a with a spouse or a significant other and how much you know um, support that they give you, right? Being girlfriend, boyfriend, um, wife, husband. So having both of you here and seeing that I've seen it personally with the two of you for so many years and we've now become family and, and the two of you have like this sort of special thing going where I think it's super important for everybody to see how, how that could work. So I, I thank you guys for coming today. Um, I really can't wait to see the picture of what I look like with long hair and you bald, but uh, Maria, you know, I'm so excited for our next chapter. Coming That's going to be interesting and Probably no one's going to watch it, but we'll put it out there anyways. But um, yeah, I mean, like besides that, like you guys personify Keegan, like I said before, and I'll say it again. Belief in the space is always the most important thing. Conviction. And I think there's very few people that have that, but you have so much. And I don't know if everybody realizes that in the space as enough as they should, but you you have shown a lot of conviction and it pays off. So thank you for that. Appreciate it. And you're able to hold the conviction when times get really yep, shitty. hundred percent. And then not just be like, maybe I was just completely wrong and I'm going to do something else. Because a lot of people, they have conviction, but it doesn't last like more than six months or a year. And they give it up quickly. And it's like, ah, yeah. oh, fuck, like, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you've been very clear since like 2021 summer-ish. Like, hey, this is the ecosystem that makes the most sense for me. And obviously you're saying like, I'm already on ETH. I'm already doing stuff here. It's like, not like I'm married to this, but I think a lot of people haven't um, used the tech. They don't see what it affords and I have. So I'm going to use my common sense and my own experience to be like, hey, and I, and I think this is yeah, the right move. This and, shows a lot about our space. And you took a lot of, I don't want to say like, shit but just as a person with conviction in the salon ecosystem it's like you guys had to go through the whole sbf ftx unwinding you have to go through all of this community bullshit yep. you have to go through constant fud that is like not really based in reality like i mean to be fair the amount of people who tell me solana like, goes down, go down every week every i'm week. like dude it's it hasn't wild. it hasn't <laughs> went down since february yeah. like you can go 320 look. days now you can go look no accidents on the no, fucking, yeah, no, incidents. no incidents no incidents you can go look like it's there but they don't yeah. even think to yeah. verify it it's just like a talking point that they mm -hmm. have and you very kindly have just like not let it affect you and then you just share with them like hey this is the truth been nice um uh, and there's not that many people like that like most no. people are like fair weather fans yep. most people were oh well this isn't working now like i need to go do something i different. didn't get exactly what i wanted right now i'm out <laughs> i need to get out because i should be getting this and i feel like you both do so much to help propel the space yeah. forward both of you but like you don't maybe get the credit you deserve especially maria like no. on the back end like you said like you don't do the public speaking you don't talk so i think it's important for us to give a platform to you to be able to say like 
here's all that shit I'm doing in the background. Like you, you've had thousands of people go through the events yep. that you produce, experience it, walk away, but like, wow. And then they don't even know well, that you're it's behind It's like it. this. If you ask artists and you say, oh, do you know Marie and Keegan? How many are going to say, of course I know them. A lot. Like, and how many of them say, oh man, they were so good to me and they helped me so much. A you lot. don't hear that often. With that, I'm going to let these ask our last question. We ask everybody before. Yeah, so the name of the podcast that we do at Red Bear is called Shipwrecked. And we ask a question um, to everybody, which is, if you were on a stranded, uh, a desert island and you were stranded and you can only bring one album with you and that album has to like get you off the island or Mentally, make you at peace but dying yeah. on the island. Either you're going to, you might die or live, it doesn't matter. What but that, album yeah. would you choose? This is an easy one. Paul Simon, Graceland. Wow. Wow. That's the fastest answer we've had. Because I, it's my. That's that's your album. That's my album. See, this is why I'm a sweetheart. We're going Pink Floyd. Wish you were here. Yeah. Because that's mm-hmm. the album that we got caught making out oh. to oh, all the way back. Right. So you didn't remember the night. Uh, no, we I remember the, the album. album. <laughs> It, it, the vibration yeah. when, when that album comes on. Wow. Well, that yeah, that's the album the, I'm bringing with. That's the maybe best answer. the best answers we've ever had. <laughs> yeah. Well, you said get me off, and no. I thought, no, I'm just kidding. Oh, no. Well, you're that, definitely getting that's, you're, that's, you're that's definitely getting a lead tonight. That's, that's, that's you, you answered this very me. well. You so answered this very that's, well. That's me in a nutshell. When you yeah. go real sweet, then you got to go a little sour, like yeah. the sour patch. Well, you <laughs> definitely gave the right answer. And uh, Freak gusher. I love you guys, and thank, thank you for thank having you. on. Yeah, we'll, we'll, have to, we'll have to do this again, yes. right? Yes. Thank you. On on a bigger couch.